Or tile finish and then go. Yeah, probably in the college we may have network issues. Yeah, sometimes uh, yeah. you can't say it. it's okay most of the time, but uh, I can't take it when it is a lecture. So sometimes uh, there will be some disturbances. Yeah, but... too many people would have logged into that Wi-Fi. Yeah. In Bombay, no, madam, it is better to leave early in the morning and reach the college. Otherwise, a lot of traffic jam. Yeah, so all the metro, everything has started, no? Almost, yes. Yeah. Mm, we have Facebook Live now, ma'am. Answers. Yeah, yeah. Ready started? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Girish, Girish is not at uh, logged in, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you? Ma'am, Kavita, ma'am. How are you, ma'am? Oh, hi, Kavita. How is your singing going on? <laughs> singing going on in a snail face. <laughs> I think you should start the program with the uh, sing with your singing. Madam's voice is uh, really good. It is. Uh... Huh? Madam, your voice is really good, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> blessed, blessed, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It's been uh, sort of uh, had completely discontinued. <laughs> for quite some time, I think about 25 years in between. So now I have restarted. Do share your songs to us, madam, whenever you do a singing uh, or something like that. No, actually, I, I'm, I'm waiting for my retirement too. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll make this as a profession full time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to take it a little more seriously. Yeah. Oh. If everything goes well, maybe next year. Great. Man. Planning to <coughs> retire. But I don't think that word suits you, ma'am. Good you morning, Dr. Rupa, ma'am. <laughs> Nobody is going to let you retire. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I have, I have told you. Hi, Gigi. Hi, I'm on. Morning, sir. Sir, we are not able to see you. 60 next year. Morning, so. sir. Ma'am, 16, not 60. Yeah, that is true. I I am sixteen at heart. <laughs> Doctor Chandrasekhar, I would like to add, Madam, voice is very mellifluous. That I believe is the correct word. <laughs> no, you know what? I don't want to age gracefully. Yeah, I would, I would like okay. to swing only. <laughs> Ma'am, you have God's gift. You should enjoy it. <laughs> oh yeah. Jaydev, start your video, yaar. Yaar, bas two minutes. I'm setting my background to IACD. That takes two, three minutes to set. I thought you're changing. No, man. Already done that. Okay. I had to get up early on yesterday also. Yesterday, actually, I missed some sessions. Because oh. yesterday was Guru, Guru Nanak Jayanti here. So we had to go to Gurdwara and all. Oh. So I left early, bit early. Good. All okay. the lectures came out very well. Yes, ma'am. I heard a few. Yeah. I had Anil sir, I had Vinita, I had two more, then some I had to miss. No, it was then quite... Uh, two minutes, uh, let me set up the background. Impactful lectures yesterday. I Actually, think. very useful for the first years. The right one, you know, the right topics. Is mute? Ho gaya? <laughs> I was thinking for a few topics, how they are going to approach... But um, I think uh, it was uh, well done. Good job. I think it went on time, no, Mohan? It went on very well, ma'am. Very, very well. It was just on maybe time, I think, maybe. Not time. Actually, yeah, actually, five minutes before time. Before, uh, yeah. Before yeah. time, we had That's nice. That's really nice, ma'am. Yeah, there was no lag period at all. It just no. totally went on. No, no, no. You all do it, Hello. And we had around uh, the entire uh, Zoom uh, 
box was full, ma'am. Meaning, uh, five hundred was the limit. We were always mm. close to five hundred. Yeah. And rest was in Facebook, like. Okay. Okay. Facebook, it is there's no limit for the numbers, no. Yes, yes. You're in college, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My room. Yeah. I know. Kavita, madam, has got nice plant in Chennai. Yes, sir. I've got a small plant this year. Madam, I got money plant. I two plant. Money plant. Why do you need, yeah? She said you have it. You don't need a money plant anymore. Are you? for my children it is it is their lookout for me to live comfortably any feedback mohan yesterday that's good, good feedbacks ma'am very good feedback any feedback mohan yesterday yes ma'am very good okay. feedback very nice yeah you should Best have was, uh, you should have taken i think uh, the feedback um, ma'am it's coming It is there, ma'am. Feedback is there, madam. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I felt uh, even for uh, for for some uh, not the the general lectures, the others uh, maybe uh, individual uh, this also with suggestions so that and you could keep it secret. Uh, you need not have to disclose it to anybody. Only thing is, some evaluation could have been done and then probably improved upon it for the next year. If you take suggestions, otherwise, if you don't take suggestions, uh, simply good, bad. I don't think it uh, scoring and uh, will matter. So, if you take up suggestions, uh, maybe we could have incorporated because students give wonderful <laughs> suggestions more than us. Sometimes. No, we we did this for the yeah, university. True, true. I uh, uh, when I was uh, the chairman board of studies in. i started this program of orientation from rajiv gandhi university so now it is almost 12th year i think uh, we did it when ramanand was the uh, ramanand shetty was the vice chancellor during that time i uh, took up that initiative along with uh, the alumni association of uh, government and college so we started that and then uh, every time i take a uh, feedback and uh, the evaluating that feedback is uh, such a wonderful thing for me and they give such beautiful suggestions <laughs> those students yes. it's actually when you analyze it oh, guy, oh my god i think uh, they are right actually ma'am yeah the young ones have better ideas here we are trying to incorporate all those and i inform the speakers speakers are were more or less fixed so little variation here and there we do because the topics are all they have all now fine tuned their <laughs> presentations so for all from uh, government uh, gdc alumni association we are doing so there uh, and i give them so this is what uh, they have suggested for your lecture so they try and incorporate uh, all of that in the next uh, year so that way we have been able to fine tune a uh, lot of things So maybe i don't think because we have grown uh, over all of that uh, egos i think if there is any feedback given to our lecture i think uh, we are in a position to take it Excellent. yeah yeah you not you, probably you should not put it in a group you send it individually everybody will take it and if we can't do that i think we are not <laughs> good morning girish sir Good morning, good morning sir. sir very good morning everybody good morning good morning sir madam good morning good morning sir good morning shishir sir girish sir 
मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर मोहन मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग हाय गिरीश ऑल सेट गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल सेट रेडी डोंट वरी ओपनिंग बैच पे ओपनिंग बैच पे हां बचमा आए छे तेरे लुकिंग गुड एंड ब्राइट ऑलवेज ऑलवेज या आई नो यू आर अ हैंडसम हीरो नो डाउट अबाउट इट ऑल मैन नाउ दारू कान ऑफ गुजरात मैडम नो नो नेक्स्ट मोदी मोदी इज सुपर हीरो एंड नेक्स्ट टू हिम ओके डन But I think uh, Girish should ask him to trim his uh, beard, yeah. Me? Okay. I'll no, try not you. Yes. <laughs> Then Modi to trim his beard. Probably he will listen to uh, Gujarati is more than. I him. thought. I thought you are telling me. <laughs> And But Sari is not, always young. Yours is trimmed only. Modi is looking very shabby these days. I am not liking it. <laughs> डॉक्टर बाला गोपाल इज नॉट विजिबल Yes, sir. He is having my, some. My moderator. Yes, sir. He is having some network issues. So anything, if he is not there, I am your moderator. Sir. Sent it to Mohan. That's why I sent mine to Mohan. <laughs> <laughs> Saying in case he is a stopgap. He is a buffer there. <laughs> Yesterday it happened, I think. No. Yes, ma'am. Pradeep, I think. A couple of people yes. Uh, one or two, I think. Shikha ma'am is there? Yeah, Shikha madam is already there. What happened to Bal Gopal? <laughs> Network issues. Ayo. Any, anyway, Mohan has a backup. Yes, ma'am. We have a backup. <laughs> Bal Gopal sir is not there. Then I am the moderator for uh, Girish sir. <laughs> Don't worry. We can start straight. Not to worry. We'll get more time. <laughs> It's nine o'clock. Actually, we can start, Mohan. Yeah. We start, sir. Yeah. Better wait for Balakopal, sir. Okay. Few minutes, woman. Okay, okay. Let us wait for two more minutes. Yeah, you can call and check with him. Yeah, just call a form. Call. Call him already, sir. Said he's got some network issue. We will be joining. Wait for two, three minutes. Time. Sir is very enthusiastic no, for all these programs. Hmm. <laughs> एक कोर बना दो गिरीश सर गिरीश सर कुड़ना एलपीटी अमरु से क्या रे आवेश है जी ना हम अच्छे से हां तो मदी के ऐसे सर जो इतने दो देवा इन काम में तो सर इनु मैंने पीडीएफ से अहमदाबाद मिनट Doctor Girish, I will only start only if Bal Gopal does my introduction. <laughs> uh, sir, then uh, then we'll start the program today, sir. Kavita yes. Madam was patient. She was right. Wait, wait. <laughs> so nice, so nice of you. Okay. Let's go for it. I would request all the others to mute themselves so that the speakers, moderators, and introducers. uh can go with whatever happens
I welcome you all for day two of this wonderful program. We had excellent reviews of day one, fantastic speakers, and beautiful lessons learned. With that, we start today's program. I request Dr. Vandana to introduce and then take it up from here. Thank you, sir. Good morning. I'm Dr. Vandana Gade, professor and PG guide in Swargiya Dada Sahib Karmik, Sruti Dental College and Hospital, Nagpur. Welcome you all the teachers and my dear PG student in second day of PG orientation program, which is organized by ISED. Yesterday, all lectures were very informative and useful for all of us. Today also, we will have a series of lectures for le first lectures by our most respected Dr. Girish Par Parmar sir on magnification, the future. IACD has given me the responsibility to introduce the Dr. Bal Gopal sir as a moderator for this session. Dr. Bal Gopal sir, who, uh, who is a pre vice principal, professor, HOD, Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Tagore Dental College and Hospital, Chennai. Sir is a member of research committee, board of studies, academic boards in few universities. He has more than 55 publications in reputed and index journals. Sir is a contributor and author of 10 dental textbooks. Sir has continued to deliver the memorial oration guest lectures, keynote address and lecture presentation in India as well as abroad. Sir is a resourceful person in curriculum development, faculty uh, teaching methods and teachers training program. Sir has been a resourceful person in a number of programs organized by DCI such as PG curriculum and DCI methods, teachers training program and many more. Sir has holds many more office in the professional association notable like Indian Association of Forensic Odontology. He is a former EC member of Indian Dental Association, Federation of Operative Dentistry and Indian Endodontic Society. Sir has received a number of fellowships and awards. Sir has received the award of Acad academic excellence for the year 2017 from the Indian Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. Sir is the best academic leader and award of Indian Dentist Research and Review during 2018. Sir has a passion for teaching and the research field and keen interested in forensic odontology. Welcome you, sir. Now I request uh, Dr. Balgopal, sir, to continue the session. Over to Dr. Balgopal, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vandana, for the flowery introduction and uh, respected president, secretary, and other office bearers of the IACD, dear colleagues and PG students. You can hear me? Yes, yes. Ah, yes. All fine, go ahead. Yes. Okay. okay. And dear colleagues and PG students, a very good morning to you all. I'm pleased to introduce a luminary in our speciality and in the dental fraternity itself. That is Professor Dr. Girish Parmar. His achievements are plenty. I'm just going to mention a few salient portions from them. There is an additional director in charge, medical education, dental health, and family, well family welfare department in the state of Gujarat. He is also dean and professor, government dental college in hospital in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. He's a postgraduate in our speciality and has acquired PhD. He has also been confirmed with the DLIP. He's a diplomat in Indian Board of Endodontics. He's a diplomat in the Indian Board of Micro Restorative Dentistry and Endodontics. He's also acquired postgraduate diploma in hospital healthcare management. He has acquired diploma in oral wafers. He's a PG certificate holder in quality management and accreditation of healthcare organization. Sir is a, a fellow Royal Society of Health and fellow World Health Organization USA, fellow International College of Dentists, fellow Indian Society for Dental Research. 
and he has over 76 publications in reputed journals and has guided over 75, 79 dissertations. He's a recognized PhD guide at the Gujarat University and has 11 PhD scholars who have done PhD under him. Sir is also bestowed with a number of honors, some of the salient being he has received the honor of Jewel of India Award, Lifetime Achievement Gold Medal Award, Date Mrs. Manorama Ben Manek Patel Dental Research Award, among the many. Dr. Girish Parma is Honorary Dental Surgeon to Governor of Gujarat. He has also been a member of Dental Council of India, nominated by the Gujarat State Government. He has been elected Senate member at Gujarat University. He has held many offices in prof professional and social association, and some of them being, he's been the president of the Indian Dental Association Gujarat State Branch, Indian Endodontic Society, He's a former president of the IACDE, or this association, and he's a president-elect of the Indian Society for Dental Research. Now, sir, is going to rationalize the use of magnification in our specialty. So, these are, this is a brief introduction of our speaker today, who is a very achieved luminary. And before I hand over the podium to him, for the participants, particularly the postgraduate students, your queries you may write in the chat box. Depending upon the time available and the popularity of the question, I shall present it to Sir at the end of the presentation. And all participants should respond to the feedback form sent to your mail ID soon after the end of the program today to get your certificate. So over to you, Dr. Bikhirish Parmar. This online platform is all yours for the next 45 minutes. Thank you. Very good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Bal Gopal, for a very nice introduction, and Dr. Vandana Gade for a nice start. I am sure that all the students are enjoying this well planned orientation program. This program will magnify your goals for smooth achievements and to set priorities for your next three years course. Let us start our first presentation on second day of this orientation program. And that is the magnification. So uh, we'll be discussing the topic under uh, these headings. Introduction why we need the magnification, which are the devices used for magnification, and in that loops in detail, microscope also will discuss, and main advantage of this device ergonomics will discuss in more details. And lastly, we'll conclude. So as we know, magnification is the process of enlarging the apparent size not physical size of any object. So what we see, we treat. If we can't see, we cannot treat. So there are many minute areas where you require manu uh, manu uh, magnification. Our naked eye, natural eye vision has limitations. We'll discuss all those in details. So why magnification? If you see this image is the uh, currency note of 2000 rupees. Without magnification, it looks like this. If we magnify this with different magnifications, uh, you'll find the difference. If you magnify with uh, three times, you can see the picture. Five times again eight times, 10 times, and ultimately 20 times. So you can make out the difference without magnification and with varieties of different magnifications. 
main problem all of us face is strain strain i studies show that 87% of dental surgeons suffer from this type of eye strain second to eye strain is lower back pain which is shared by 57% to 60% surveyed dental surgeons in fact no treatment is more than marginally effective the two conditions undoubtedly go together and uh, will show you how to prevent all those dental surgeon can increase their resolving ability by simply moving closer to the object this movement is accomplished in dentistry by either raising the dental chair or operator need to go closer and closer most people cannot focus at distance closer than 10 to 12 cm furthermore as the eye subject distance that is focal length decreases the eye must converse and that creates the problem eye strain there are multiple reported established articles and literature for all these personal hazards so in conservative dentistry and endodontics how best magnification can help if you see the earlier slide without magnification you cannot see uh, the minute crack but if you use microscope and see under a microscope with magnification definitely you will make out uh, uh, the uh, minute crack so again uh, this is the example for specified canal under magnification you can very well identify and uh, see practically the details at the floor of the chamber and opening of the orifice in case of perforation also without magnification you cannot see this type of picture with magnification you can clarify your vision depth of the vision also you can see and you can plan your repair separated instruments also can be retrieved easily under home magnification endo surgeries can be performed with a minimal invasion if you do under magnifications so which are the various devices tools used for magnification first one is loops there are varieties of loops available and the magnifying loops were developed to address the problem of proximity decreased depth of field and eye strain occasioned by moving closer to the subject loops are classified by optical method in which they produce magnification there are mainly three different types of loops single lens loop belly lens and prismatic in case of a single lens as a compromise system it has a plastic lens and uh, uh, it varies repeatedly so it is not practically used much but this type of uh, system is most commonly used and in this uh, type of loop uh, the magnification limit is 3.5 times and they are relatively lightweight also in case of uh, prismatic loop they provide improved quality of magnification wider field of view and greater depth of field but disadvantage is they are heavier and have longer barrel and are uh, costly they can be used for all levels of uh, uh, magnifications as per classification also we can divide them in three different uh, 
categories ll do the lens they are attached to the lens another one is a flip up low there is a joint there is a joint and you can flip up and down as and when required and uh, last one is a headband you can rest uh, the loop on your head and uh, will be much stable and uh, convenient so magnifying loop will have superior magnification compared to without magnification and will provide excellent depth of field will reduce eye strain and uh, head and neck fatigue and ultimately correct spherical and chromatic abrasions so there are different parameters to be considered for use of these lobes number 1 uh, will show you interpupillary distance interpupillary distance is a measurement of the distance between the centers of two eyes this is distinct distinct static for each and every individual and will remain a constant convergence angle will determine the working distance and declination angle uh, is the single most important factor to maintain proper ergonomics a very steep inclination angle will help you prevent tilting head too far forward causing unnecessarily neck pain but again there are limitations with uh, this type of lobes and uh, disadvantages or limitations are we get magnification up to 4.5 times there are higher uh, magnification loops available but are heavy and uh, with a limited field of view so ultimate answer for all these is is the microscope operating microscope and is now best used in both our specialty endodontics and conservative dentistry first it was introduced in 1981 by apothecar and in 1999 gary kerr introduced the galilean optics and that was ergonomically conceived for our dental purpose with several advantages that allowed for easy use and scope for nearly all endodontic and restorative procedures now this operating microscope is well recognized and is a powerful adjunct of course cost cost of the microscope is frequently cited as the major impediment but in fact it is not the cost but a failure to understand the importance of precision perfection and ergonomic skill necessary for effective use in our specialty appropriate for examination of uh, uh, tooth orientation and positioning of bar and ultrasonic tips low magnification is sufficient and that will allow comparison also with uh, adjacent uh, uh, anatomical landmarks medium uh, magnification uh, is used for non surgical and surgical endodontic procedures and it provides an acceptable feel to view the depth of the field it is used for perforation repair separated instruments retrieval and some surgical procedures where we require more precision and accuracy high magnification is used for examination and inspection of minute anatomical landmarks like uh, structure like calcified canal orifice and minute cracks the color difference also you can uh, make out with this type of high magnification in case of tertiary dentin and secondary dentin you you find the difference of the color so advantage of this uh, magnification devices are you get enhanced visualization 
and at the same time you improve your working posture ergonomics for this type of uh, procedures you require special instruments your conventional instruments uh, may not be useful for magnification we should use instruments which are specifically designed for microscope uh, like uh, micro mirrors micro blades and there are many more there is a scope of docu documentation with this type of uh, uh, magnification device so microscope helps in easy documentation thereby increase ability to communicate with your patients for all referral purposes and you will uh, able to maintain the permanent record for your follow ups ergonomics is the main advantage for this type of uh, uh, device that is uh, operating microscope ergonomics can be defined ergon and nomos is a greek word ergon means work nomos means correctness in short working correctly is ergonomics so here are the different pictures when you you work without magnification when you work with loops and when you work under operating microscope when operating operating without magnification aid the head and neck tend to be tend to be held at an unbalanced forward position if you see the uh, figure a you find unbalanced forward position in this posture the vertebrae cannot properly support the spine and causing shoulder stabilizing muscles to fatigue quickly and they become tight ischemic and painful and this condition is known as tns tension neck syndrome depending on the type of magnification support the operator in head posture ranging from 0 degree to 25 degree forward if you see the figure b loops are referred to as telescopes and are popular type of magnification used in dentistry however loops system do not provide neutral head posture that is ear over shoulder well designed loops may significantly significantly improve operator working posture in dentistry and will enable a working posture of less than 25 degree forward head posture and in figure c when you work under operating microscope will enable us a near neutral head posture and will avoid overload for the operator particularly in critical shoulder neck area so is the best ergonomic achieved under operating microscope what should be the ideal operator position when you work under operating microscope the operator should adjust the sitting position so that the hips are 90 degree to the floor and the knees are 90 to 110 degrees to the hips and the operators perform operate i mean operators for arms should lie comfortably on the arm rest on the operator's chair for for arms are 90 degree to the upper arms so while working under microscopes hips to the floor knees to the hip and forearms to the upper arm angle should be perpendicular i repeat if to the floor knees to the hips forearms to the upper arms angle should be perpendicular if you see these positions the back should be uh, in a neutral position erect and perpendicular to the floor feet should be placed flat on the floor the eyepiece inclined so that the head and neck are held at the angle that can be comfortably sustained 
The correct operator position for nearly all endodontic procedure is directly behind the patient, behind the chair at the 11 or 12, dig, 12 o'clock position. 11 or 12 o'clock position is commonly used for all endodontic procedures. Initially, we may uh, be comfortable, freshers will be comfortable with uh, nine o'clock position. But once you are skillful and confident, ultimately you'll enjoy 11 or 12 o'clock positions only. Elbow support. Throughout your procedure, elbow support is mandatory and will allow the necessary fine motor skills under constant magnification and muscular comfort throughout the procedure. The position of the patient. Uh, initially, we adjust rough positioning and then fine positioning. The patient should be positioned in a comfortable supine position. Positioning can be improved through special padding or uh, under the head and neck post, uh, areas. Most treatments can be performed on the upper jaw when the patient is lying flat or, or slightly inclined. And for the lower jaw, most treatments can be performed when the patient is lying flat. Positioning of the operating microscope and focusing. Move the body of microscope approximately to the working distance. And, and then looking through the eyepiece, move the microscope up and down until the working area comes into the focus. Along with that, you'll have to adjust the interpupillary distance. And positioning of the patient. In non-surgical uh, endodontics, 100% of the work of, at the microscope is done in, in direct vision through mouth mirror. Fine movement of the patient can be done by slightly moving the patient, not the microscope. Head up, a patient's head up or down. Fine, patient, fine position to the patient is needed to aid in good illumination in the field of operation. To obtain a good view of treatment field, we can move the patient's head to the left or right instead of moving the microscope up and down or different position. Dental assistant is must when you work under microscope. The dental assistant must be able to see what you see in order to assist you properly. Assistant should be in upright posture with elbow supported. Enough space should be there uh, to move easily throughout the operatory. There are laws of ergonomics. Ergonomics motion is divided into five classes of motion. Class one motion, where you move your fingers only. Class two motion, where you move your fingers and wrist joint. Class three motion is movement ori ori originating from the elbow. Class four motion is the movement originating from the shoulder. And class five movement is the movement that involves twisting or bending of a body at the waist. So here is the picture showing class one movement, where operator fingers receive an instrument from the assistant and only operator's fingers move. In case of class two motion, operator's hand receives the instrument from the assistant and hand and instrument is moved toward the operator. Operator waist moves for this purpose. Operator's wrist joint moves for this purpose. Class three movement explains movement originated from the elbow of the operator. Here in all these images, 
my elbow is moving when I am taking the instrument. Not that my elbow is fully supported by arm rest during the entire procedure. Class four motion represents movements originated from shoulders. Here in this image, my shoulder, arms, elbows, and hands are moving to reach the operating microscope. In case of class five motion, it represents movement that involves twisting and bending of from the waist. This movement is the most unwanted of all. But unfortunately, this is the most commonly used movement by dental surgeons and assistant, maybe with or without operating microscope. To use microscope, proper operatory design should be there. And there are principles for operatory design. Circle of influence. Everything you and your assistant need should be in arm reach. Anything and everything, whatever you require, should be available nearby. You need not to get up and go and get. Everything you or assistant need should be in arm reach. Circle of influence. That means all instruments and equipments needed for a procedure that includes your computer, scanners, digital radiographs, monitors, etc. are ergonomically placed according to the circle of influence principle and are easily reached by uh, operator or uh, the assistant. And maximum one can use class three motions only, not beyond that. There are varieties of microscope available. Dental operating microscope can be positioned in the area of operatory that will allow for easy access that it may be easily moved into operating position. Can either with a movable floor stand or permanently mounted to the floor or a wall or ceiling mounted. A floor stand allows to roll the operating microscope from one treatment area to another treatment area. Ceiling and wall mounts are firmly anchored in place and no floor space is required. When planning well, uh, I mean when planning wall or ceiling mounts, you should check the strength and sturdiness of your walls of operatory. Vibration to the walls will lead uh, uh, the vibration to the, your microscope and uh, will create problems while your procedures. And those vibrations can be transferred to the stand and uh, will affect the uh, ultimately image and your vision will be hampered. Dental chair position. As we discussed earlier, the patient chair should be positioned in a way that sufficient space is available in both above and below the chair. Above the chair and below the chair. The seated operator should be able to see the operating field through binoculars comfortably without straining. While designing the operatory, enough space behind the chair is required for free movements of the operator. Ideally, every operatory should have minimum 10 by 10 feet space. And your, your working cabinet also should be movable, not fixed one. So working under microscope will be initially time consuming for the beginners. But the practice and repetition are the two main factors will lead you to the success. The conventional concept should not be mixed with the concept of the magnification. This is just a brief uh, sensitization of regarding uh, magnification use. 
but to know well and to be trained uh, structurally our iscd our association has started the fellowship program that is ibmre fellowship in micro restorative endodontics we have already started this program and there are five mentors uh, throughout the country me dr sishi singh dr mohan kumar dr jayshree anil and dr sai kalyan are the mentors five centers are there throughout the uh, country and first batch is already uh, registered and we have started that course and for second batch registration is in in process eligibility is uh, mds with two years experience post pg two years experience is required and uh, 18 months is the duration of the course and the course fee is uh, 2 lakhs rupees so if you join this course you will learn and you will become expert and you will be regularly tuned to use a microscope and once a dentist uses magnification he can never revert back to blindfolded dentistry so thank you all this is in brief regarding uh, magnification actually is not the future it is already used in past what is the requirement of the day and in the present uh, era of pandemic we can uh, be prevented by using two main tools that is rubber dam and microscope rubber dam and microscope will help you to prevent from cross infection by treating your patients you will have to treat each and every patient considering that each and every patient is positive of corona virus so friends this is all about my talk over to the moderator please that was an excellent presentation sir so lucid and so very well illustrated the best being all the pictures are your own shows that you are an excellent clinician too and you practice what you teach that's what the photos showed it was great sir i don't think there will be many questions because uh, your presentation covered almost everything that the pg should know including you, the uh, ibmr yes yes when they and they will be very confident in integrating microscope at least should definitely start on integrating uh let me see the question uh, there are a few questions so for example uh, we started the presentation with the loops and then the microscope so should all pg students start with the loop and then only graduate with microscope definitely yes sir everyone should start with loops only first and uh, maximum magnification we require in our routine procedure is not more than uh, 3.5 to 4 time magnifications so to start with uh, all procedures we should use loops only first and then uh, gradually one should switch over to the operating microscope sir should we say any particular number of cases to be completed under uh, loops and then uh, should graduate to microscope okay for that a lot of exercises have been done in past by our association one teachers training program was conducted in hyderabad where um, our three senior professors were allotted this work and uh, they have suggested to the uh, association and to the council also uh, i can show those uh, slides just yes this is this is what uh, clinical work for first uh, year students Uh, this uh, porta is decided uh, by dr shikha and dr kavita and one more professor three professors uh, were uh, working on this and they have recommended this to the council as well as to the association and preferably all clinical exercise to be performed using loops and one of each uh, should be performed under uh, operating microscope in second year also similarly they have defined in a very clear manner that what they are supposed to do here also preferably all clinical exercise to be performed using loops and one in each under a microscope similarly for third year and final year students also 
they are supposed to work under loops and microscope so there is clear clarity by council as well as uh, our uh, association how to work and how many different cases are to be done sir thank you sir uh, now does the use of microscope require more than two hands if so how can the pg is manage that sir medium magnification is required for perforated repair and instrumental retrieval and surgical procedures so under the guidance of their guide uh, they can work on uh, um, uh, under microscope and for high magnification well, also the... you require sir uh, the question like calcified canals and minute cracks are required for uh, high magnification sir yes please over to moderator sir uh, no the question is whether the pg requires an assistant to work with a microscope definitely yes sir without assistant one cannot work under microscope minimum four handed dentistry and uh, you can extend up to six handed uh, dentistry sir train well trained assistant is is the the requirement to work under a microscope uh -huh. uh and i think that's one question we say sir uh, in which year they should uh, start using microscope you already told that uh, right from first year onwards they have to yes first year and, second uh, year third year all the what years are the various cases that can be done yes that's also answered sir. so and minimum number of cases also you have answered i think yes, so we have uh, covered almost everything so it was an excellent presentation sir so once again i hand it over to the uh, introducer thank you very much sir uh, so there is also one one question which says that can you tell some good loops not very expensive for pgs <laughs> dr mohan kumar uh, will uh, able to tell you regarding all these and uh, he had taken one lecture during the uh, council orientation is dr mohan kumar available yeah yeah sir i'm hearing him uh, yes, yes, yes yes good and expensive <laughs> 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 it's difficult to <laughs> see the best uh, see the best ones are see if you are not thinking of getting a microscope in near future invest on an expensive loop if you're going to not get a microscope for the next 4 years or if you're planning to get a microscope in the next 1 or 2 years you can go with uh, loops there are loops which are even as less as 8000 bucks but you have to be really careful with your eyes really really careful so if you are if if you're going to jump within 6 months of using a loop to a microscope just to get that orientation you can go with those loops but if not uh, mm -hmm. it's always better to go with good ones good ones hmm. usual type of question by pgs <laughs> true Thank sir they, they 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 are really worried about the cost and and it is it's a genuine question yeah i understand because they do have a lot of issues uh, with the financial to begin True. with and the college cannot provide a everybody yeah, with those uh, to everybody actually permanent yes. not, a, not an individual microscope also for all the students so loop loop is like a permanent investment one should invest uh, for loops every student should buy good quality of loop and then that will be all the robots Yes. Yeah. Even for those three years, an individual microscope for all the students uh, may not be a very practical. Uh, Correct, ma'am. Correct. Situation. No. So and we should also start off a program as how the PGs can work with four hands, because one PG has to assist the other PG. Then the number of cases will get reduced. Yeah. I think that we'll have to work on the logistics probably, of working yeah. with the four hands. Yes, yeah, so probably the first years can start with assisting. the first six years we had the basic sciences classes for six months and in some way they have to figure uh, it no, out no uh, yeah the thing yes, is yes. Uh, my suggestion is uh, if the first years are assisting see like you have given a quota most of the work is done under loop and uh, certain quota of work done under the microscope to get the hang of it right so when they have scheduled an appointment for a microscope perhaps the first years 
can be uh, scheduled on a roster or something like that, or you make a pair and they start using it, they will also learn in the process. True. The number of cases will get reduced. Yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, that, that is also- Somewhere we have to strike a balance, true. Of course, individual assistance, even the college will not <laughs> provide. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for. Yes, introduce. Yes, Dr. Vandana, you can proceed. Thank please. you very much, sir, for your excellent lecture. Our student must understand now the need of magnification, ergonomics, and how this magnification can be a game changer in the field of endodontics and conservative dentistry. On the behalf of IACD, I want to share the virtual certificates. This is uh, the certificate for uh, to Girish Parmar sir for their. Uh, thank, you, thank you, thank you, everyone. And and this is to. Uh, certificate okay. of honor to Balgopal sir for excellent moderation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Girish sir. Thank you, Balgopal sir. And thank you, Mandana madam, for uh, starting day two uh, really, really well. And it was nice to see Giri Sharan in his full form for magnification. Thank you, thank you, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you. You covered everything. Photographs were everything. excellent, sir. Everything. I mean, there's nothing much uh, a first year would want to know in uh, magnification. Thank you. So with this, we will go to the second uh, uh, lecture of the day. I would request Dr. Uh, Shashidhar uh, to introduce the moderator and the speaker. Uh, very good morning, one and all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Honorable DCA President uh, Dr. Devendu Majum sir for taking the initiative of organizing this uh, first ever online PG orientation program, Thank which you. is, which is, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Please yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, first ever online PG orientation program, uh, which is going to benefit all the PG students. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir, president of uh, IACD and the entire IACD team for giving me this opportunity to introduce. So can you unmute yourself? So you have to unmute. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the moderator of the uh, session is Dr. Krishna Prasad, sir, uh, presently working as a principal professor and head of the department at Sri Sai Dental College and Research Institute, Shika Kulam. Uh, sir has completed a uh, UG in 2001 and PG in the year 2004 from PMNM Dental College, Bagal Court, Karnataka. Uh, sir was elected as EC member for two consecutive years uh, and as vice president of IACD. Uh, sir is also editorial member of uh, the prestigious uh, journal of our association, that is uh, Journal of Conservative Dentistry. Sir is member board of studies for UG at NTR University of Health Sciences Vijayawada. Sir is external member board of studies for dental at their mm -hmm. DY Patil Vidyapit Pune. Uh, sir is UGC approved PhD guide uh, for Pacific University Udaipur, Rajasthan. Uh, so uh, I wish all the uh, postgraduate students uh, who are enrolled this year for this PG orientation program and uh, uh, wish you good luck. Uh, from here, I would like to uh, uh, ask uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad sir to 
uh, take up from now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir, Krishna Prasad, sir, you are not audible. No, sir, we are not able to hear you. No. Sir, you have to unmute. Uh, Krishna Prasad, sir. No, you will let him in. Sir Krishna Prasad, sir, we are not able to hear. I think you should go ahead. Shall I go ahead, sir? No, sir, you are not still audible. Dr. KP, your voice is not audible. So can you remove your headphones and then try to go directly? Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, you can. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sheshidhar. Uh, it's a, a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Rupanadik, ma'am, who is an excellent teacher, ardent academician, competent clinician, and an able administrator, currently working in the capacity of Dean, Professor, and HOD at Dayanand Sagar College of Dental Sciences, Bengaluru. Apart from being an active academician, she also carries 30 years long of clinical experience in private practice and as a consultant in corporate hospitals. During her three decades of career as an academician, she has trained a lot of postgraduates under her. She has been actively involved in various academic activities and has made immense contribution to improve the quality of dental education. She has occupied many responsibilities, responsible uh, positions in the university as well as various professional bodies, such as Member Academic Council, Chairman Board of Studies, Chairman PhD Committee, etc. And had the honor of having occupied the coveted position of Dean of Faculty of Dentistry of the prestigious Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Karnataka, Bengaluru. She was also the Chairman for Curriculum Reform Committee for Dental Council of India. She is also actively involved in faculty development programs, conducting training of train training of trainers workshop to the teachers for dental faculty. Madam is a popular personality amongst the fraternity of conservative dentists and endodontists. She has occupied prestigious positions in our specialty organizations as well. She has worked as an executive committee member for several years, went up the rank to become vice president and finally reached the pinnacle of the pinnacle as president of IACD. She is also the founder president of Association of Conservative Dentists and Odontists of Karnataka State. She is one of the most sought after speakers in the specialty of conservative dentistry who has delivered more than 50 guest lectures so far at various state and national forums. She has published over 65 scientific papers in various reputed journals and contributed chapters in textbooks. She was also the editor-in-chief of RGUHS Dental Journal and is in the editorial board of many other journals. Her organization skills and leadership qualities are exemplary. She has organized and conducted many conferences and CD programs in conservative dentistry in both state as well as national levels. Recognizing her contribution to the field of dental education, IACD has recently honored her with an academic excellent award. Ma'am, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad, for those uh, wonderful words of uh, introduction. 
A very good morning to one and all. It's uh, indeed my pleasure to congratulate each and every one of you. And you're all here because you deserve to be here. So amid so much of competition, you have managed to get an entry into this speciality is commendable. So a very, very warm welcome to the family of IACT. Well, uh, without much ado, let me begin by drawing, uh, let me share the screen. So uh, let me begin uh, by drawing inspiration from Gnana Karma Yoga of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna asks Lord Krishna, Kim Karmaha, Kim Akarme, means what is action, what is inaction? And the Lord replies, action is the core of everything in life. For any action to happen, one has to move from an awareness to awareness. And once you are aware, you need comprehension. Comprehension needs to conviction. And the moment you are convinced, you carry this conviction to its ultimate action. So my dear young friends, today it is my endeavor to take you all through the action cycle of making you aware of what is a seminar, the need for a seminar, how to make an effective seminar presentation, what are the various key preparation steps involved in the preparation of a seminar, and what is the role of fellow participants as well as faculty in a seminar presentation. If you have gone through the curriculum of uh, an MDS program, it says you need to do so many number of seminars in your three year tenure as a postgraduate students. So many of you might be wondering, why seminar? Why can't we have lectures like how we used to have uh, in uh, the undergraduate program, isn't it? See, lecture is essentially a monologue. There's hardly any interaction happens, but in a seminar, there is no audience all those who are present in the seminar are participants. So basically, uh, a seminar gives you an in-depth information on the topic. It allows you to express yourself, express your understanding and your critical thoughts and views aloud. So seminarium, it, it, uh, this word seminar is derived from uh, a Latin word called seminarium, which means a seed plot. That it stimulates inquiry, a seed plot that stimulates inquiry and, the, and discussion. So it also helps to generate new ideas and the tolerance for different ideas and opinions as well. And it helps to inculcate in you the much needed verbal skills and it thereby nurtures your intellectual commitment. Right? And these things in turn will improve your confidence level. So confidence, uh, my dear friends, is just not appealing. It's indeed an outward expression of your understanding as well as your commitment. So to put it in a nutshell, a seminar is an effective way of learning, informing, educating, and managing people. So trust me, it is going to be enjoyable if you put your heart and soul into it. I'm sure uh, many of you might be experiencing uh, this sort of a feeling 
uh, either you have already been given a seminar or you're likely to be given a seminar in the close future. And uh, before we move further, let me share my own experience as a postgraduate student way back in the year 1988. So I joined uh, a postgraduate program after a gap of almost four, uh, four and a half years from the time I completed uh, BDS. So in the meanwhile, I got married, had a kid and whatnot. So after a week, I was called uh, by my professor and uh, I was asked to do a seminar uh, just the following week or uh, 10 days later. And he gave me a topic. So you know what the topic of uh, my seminar was? It was said, forces acting on class two restorations. To begin with, it appeared very Greek and Latin to me because first of all, it was almost four, four and a half years gap. I had forgotten uh, some part of dentistry already. And then uh, moreover, um, I had not heard of this uh, sort of a chapter in the, the only book which I was aware of as an undergraduate. I just looked into that textbook. I did not find a chapter and I really got panicked. There was no internet and Google obviously then. So I thought of asking my seniors, but my ego came in the way because they were much younger to me by age and were junior to me in BDS. So I decided to ask uh, for some time, seeking postponement by a week or 10 days. The only recourse I was left with is to fall sick. And somehow I did uh, fairly or unfairly, managed to fall sick and uh, then get an additional week or 10 days time. But believe me, that additional week did not help me in any way. And let me confess that I failed miserably in my first seminar. It was a total disaster. I failed not because seminar presentations are difficult. It's only because it's a new experience for me. And it's a fear of unknown. And if, I, if, if only I was a little more organized and how to go about if I knew, probably I could have structured it better. I would have organized it better, I prepared and presented better. It wouldn't have been such a disaster as it was. So the key is the preparation. So there are some of the key preparation steps I want to put forth and let me take it one by one. So the first step, as I told you, is the selection of the seminar. Sometimes your professor gives you the topic like how I was given, then you have no chance. But if you're given a choice to select a seminar, to select a topic that is familiar to you, something that interests you, so that, and uh, so that it makes your preparation a little easy and you don't get panicky to begin with, right? So the next step is to gather information and evidences. I always believe that a good teacher is one who probably will, uh, will, will tell you where to look for, but does not tell you what to look for. See, because in this era of information explosion, there is bountiful available information on the click of a button. But you should know how to save this information, which goes to the dustbin and which actually you can cite or make use of. And my dear friends, your days of spoon feeding and force feeding has come to an end today, isn't it? With the introduction to your postgraduate programs, all these have ended. So basically we want to inculcate in you the self-directed learning so that you will become lifelong learners, which is, I feel, is very, very crucial for all successful professionals, more so medical profession. So that self-directed learning is something which has to be inculcated and all these teaching learning um, programs like journal clubs, seminars, group discussions, uh, case discussions. So all these are introduced in your postgraduate program to inculcate in you these type of uh, learning process. So how do you gather this information in a systematic and a scientific way. Let me give you some tips. 
So to begin with, select about three or four textbooks written by reputed authors and read thoroughly, okay? So I think yesterday, uh, Vinita was talking about uh, the, the textbooks uh, where you can find a detailed and in-depth information about a particular uh, topic, isn't it? So that sort of reputed textbooks, if you have handy, then you can probably go to the library and look for these textbooks and read these books thoroughly, okay? So after uh, then, once you do that, you will get a fundamental grasp on this topic. So the moment you get the initial fundamental grasp, then only you start looking for journal articles. Don't dump into the, the journal searching before you read from a, an authentic textbook. So I suggest you look for, even in, amongst the journals, look for a latest narrative review articles on the topic. A narrative give you, a review gives you a comprehensive view of all the uh, information on that particular topic with relevant references and citations. So you can go through that initially deeply and then what, um, uh, and, and what happens is the moment you read this, then you from there you can look for frequently cited articles or any interesting articles and you procure them physically to get the first-hand information on their findings. So this is how you should go about in brief, okay? So it might be prudent even to look at the seminars of the seniors or you discuss with them or we discuss with your teachers, whatever, but beware, never cut and paste seminars because I'm told that if you, uh, there are groups uh, and even on Facebook, if you ask for a um, particular type of request for a particular seminar within, within uh, a day or within uh, probably a few hours, you will get uh, a prepared seminar uh, presentations, right? So, but let me tell you, uh, my dear young friends, never approach it that way because you should understand that seminars and journal club presentations are for you, by you, and to you. So these cutting and pasting business can only fulfill the norms of the university, but it doesn't actually fulfill your learning process. You are all adults, and you have all come here with so much of uh, uh, pains taken to get into this. So it is necessary that you sincerely be involved in the learning process rather than simply getting um, fulfilling the norms and uh, getting the, the degree for your practice. So that is not your purpose, right? So because you have put in so much of effort even to get into this course. So you better, you can't afford to do that, isn't it? So the learning has to happen properly. So next st step is organizing this information and the thoughts you have formed after reading all this information and the opinions you have made after reading all gathering and reading all this information into in a proper uh, in organizing all this in a proper and a structured manner here i feel you're like a script writer you have to not only make your story interesting but also allow some amount of inquiry and discussion so for that, the information, first of all, have to be gathered systematically and then organized in such a way that initially you make an outline of what all you want to include. And what is the structure in which you're going to uh, um, include all these topics, even the minute subheadings, everything you can write it down. And there should be a succinct flow of thoughts. There should be no abrupt move from one topic or one subheading to another. So the flow has to be succinct and the, the, the sequencing has to be very logical with graceful transitions, right? So for that, always uh, in your presentation, follow what is called as the rule of three T's, which says, tell them what you're going to tell them first, okay? So then you tell them in detail. And finally, briefly tell them what you have already told.
told them. So this is the, the crux of uh, the way the, the seminar has to be uh, to be dealt with. Okay, so having said that, a seminar essentially consists of three parts, okay? Introduction, body, and conclusions. So you need to plan each one of them meticulously because all are equally important. Talking of introduction. So introductions give, introduction gives the first impression of you, your intent, and the content. So make the best out of it. So what do you do when you go on, uh, on, your, on your first date with your girlfriend or a boyfriend? You plan beforehand, isn't it? As to how you begin your conversation or, uh, so that he or she will develop interests and wants to know more about you and she will listen to you with, uh, uh, with more excitement. Similarly, there are several ways how you can attract the participants uh, right from the beginning. Think of one of these techniques to introduce your talk. Okay, so you can give them. So it's the catching the participants' attention is known as uh, setting uh, induction, right? So you may give them a problem to think about. Suppose you encounter a situation like this and whatnot, and give them a story or a personal anecdote because stories always attract uh, attention. You can use a quotation if you want to start on a more philosophical note like how I did, or uh, even a joke if you are good at it, humor. Then, uh, and after that, you tell them what you will be talking about that day. And then, most importantly, why your topic is important, why it is so interesting or exciting for them to pay attention to your talk, okay? So that is how you should begin your introduction. It's, it's basically like an icebreaker, okay? So the next is the body of the seminar. So body of the seminar should include all the information that is relevant to the topic and it should suit your objective. Initially, you're going to give the objectives of your seminar, right? Like how I did in the beginning. What is, what is, the, what is my objective for today, isn't it? So that it should suit or uh, your objectives. And uh, initially, talk about the established facts, okay? Authentic facts. Then you can include the controversies around that topic. And whatever controversies you're mentioning, it has to be expressed only with scientific evidence. That means to say, who has said this? What sort of work was done? Who has done the work? Is it from a good, uh, publication. So all of these has to be evaluated before you can make use of these views in your seminar. And then you have to cite them. Because it may be agreeable, it may not be agreeable for many. So according to so-and-so, this is what it is. And this is the evidence he has. This is the, the sort of work he has done based on which he has given his, his view or his thoughts or his opinion. So that's how you should put across the, the, the controversial uh, views when you're talking about. Next comes the summary. This summary is what the participants should ultimately remember and carry home. So it's like the climax of your story. So you have to make it highly memorable so that they can carry it and they retain it in their brain. So, um, so your, your take home message should match your objectives, first of all, isn't it? It should match. Then list highlights of your presentation. And when you do so, be concise and crisp. Don't write paragraphs and paragraphs again, okay? So it should be the gist. And it should also have some original content, very important. So this original content may be in the form of opinions, you can form your opinion. Nobody uh, prevents you from doing that. And uh, it could be even questions on the areas that lack clarity. There should be gaps in the, there could be gaps in the information that is provided. So if you feel so, you can question. So these are not dealt with and there are no answers to these uh, areas. There is no clarity on this part of 
the uh, information in the literature that is available till this date. So that you can point out. And also suggestions for further work. If there is no clarity, if there are gaps in the information, so you could always suggest, okay, these areas need some more information. So those are your own thoughts and your own opinions. So that also has to be put across. That shows how uh, well you have read and uh, assimilated all the information. And also your uh, higher level thinking is expressed in these, these type of views. And finally, don't forget to provide bibliography and acknowledgements to all those who have helped you in making this presentation. So let me give you some amazing facts about uh, learning. Um, this, this is a, it's a study which was done about uh, the recall uh, uh, after a presentation. So if you try um, uh, to recall a particular information after three hours of presentation, by telling, you can recall about 70%, by showing 72%, telling and showing 85%. So if you look at it, there is not much too much of a, there is not uh, too much of a difference between hardly about five, 10%, this side, that side. Well, let's see what happens if you try to recall the same after three days. So by telling it's 10% showing 20% and by telling and showing hoping 65%, a dramatic jump, right? So, well, the point I'm trying to impress upon you here is the importance of audiovisual aids for an effective seminar presentation because an audiovisual aid helps in many ways it allows you to make important points and it keeps the audience attention there's a focus when you have uh, an audiovisual presentation and it can even communicate special concepts and procedures in a more effective manner it also provides some structure and order to your presentation so it won't go uh, haywire and even the timing of the talk can be controlled if you have so many slides you know how much you're going to talk in a, each slide so that way there are um, there are several advantages of using an audiovisual aid for your seminar presentation because during our days we didn't have this much and so the seminars would, would go on and uh, on and then uh, probably get extended and um, here and there and going out of relevance many a times. So having said that, let me give you certain tips for making PowerPoint slides. Many, many of you might be aware and just just a brief uh, uh, tips, clinic, uh, uh, tips for uh, your uh, presentation skills. PowerPoint uh, slides pack a lot of its power when it comes to content and concept follow what is known as the KISS principle. So now so don't start getting ideas. I'm only talking of keeping it short and simple. Okay. So when you are talking of um, about the content, it has to be impactful then follow what is known as the kill principle. That is keep it large and legible, okay? So when you are looking at backgrounds, use only contrasting colors and use different colors to only emphasize a point. So multicolors, rainbow colors, um, and uh, these type of uh, backgrounds are, are not very good. And then always be consistent with the background. Don't use different backgrounds for, uh, uh, the, for different slides. When it comes to font size, use 24 or 28 point for text. I use in fact 28 most of the time. 32 for list of points, 36 for titles and 48 for major titles and anything less than 18 are barely seen on a projection screen. It might look good on your computer screen, but never use it on uh, when you're projecting it on, uh, on a screen, right? Talking of uh, the um, 
the, the choice of font. So there are many types of font that are available that are very artistic, nice to look at and things like that. But always stick to Arial, Times New Roman or Georgia because they are easier to read and understand. Your purpose is just that, right? Not, it, not to make it look very artistic or whatever it is. Then structure of the slide. You should not have more than one slide per minute. And write in a point form, not in complete sentences. Follow the rule of six. That is not more than six to eight points per slide and not more than six to eight words per line, right? This is a bad structure. Although there are exactly the same number of points on this slide as the previous slide, paragraphs like this makes it difficult both for you and the others to read. So they are focusing on reading rather than listening to you. So that is, that's not good for you. So use animation and sound effects sparingly. So this animation, did it add any value at all? So unless I, it has some relevance, there is no need for you to use animations, right? So see all these sound effects, I don't think it made any sense in this context. So if you are using any of these sound or animations, it should have some value, add some value to your um, presentation. So what are, whatever you are trying to convey. A picture is definitely worth a thousand words. So whenever required, never hesitate to use more and more pictures, even a video. So even a video can be incorporated. They're especially useful to hesitate uh, to uh, in fact, to explain a particular procedure or a technique. But these uh, um, videos can also be uh, used, um, the ready-made videos uh, from the internet, or uh, maybe your own videos you can prepare if you have done a particular technique and then maybe uh, edit it and use it uh, as much as it is relevant or needed, okay? So don't have the entire video, it will take too much of your time. So next comes the rehearsals, right? So the rehearsals, when you come to rehearsals and practice, if you want to overcome the podium panic, the dictum is always practice, practice, and practice. So practice in front of the mirror, peers, roommates, whoever, your cat, your dog, whatever it is. But silent rehearsals will definitely not help. So you can even record and listen. So that helps you to improve your performance each time. And then time your presentation. Always time your presentation. So never overextend than what has been allotted for you. So that can happen only when you rehearse it, you will know how much time. Because even while doing this, I was given certain amount of time and then I told them this is the time uh, I have to finish. So I have done one or two rehearsals to make sure. So there's nothing wrong. So have a rehearsal and time your presentation. And I often tell my students in a lighter vein that the presentation should be like a mini skirt, long enough to cover the vitals, but short enough to keep the interest moving, right? So that is how I think your presentations. And uh, I think uh, if you have time, you can identify all these uh, hot girls wearing a mini skirt. Maybe you can take a screenshot and discuss with your friends. Yes, now uh, let's move on to the DD, the actual delivery that can happen. There is a dictum in English, not what you say, but how you say that is more important in a presentation. Therefore, Punch, pause, and modulation essentially decides the effectiveness of your presentation. So stay animated and show some enthusiasm in your voice. If you yourself morose or morose, how can you keep the participants' interest going? So there has to be, um, that has to be visible. Your enthusiasm has to be visible in your delivery as well as in your body language. So speak clearly 
and loudly modulate your voice most importantly and do not keep staring at the screen maintain a good eye contact because it makes others feel that they are involved in your presentation and what is more important is speaking with conviction and passion if you are well prepared you are convinced so and this conviction and passion makes the presentation much more lively and energetic so all the others also take it more uh, positively and excited manner next comes the the discussion time or the question time so this particular part of the seminar is essentially meant to clarify doubts or explore the topic further or to know you an in depth understanding of the so most of the times um, the the teachers ask you questions uh, to know what is your understanding how how well you have understood the topic and then any clarification of the doubt uh, will certainly uh, gives you a more in depth information and better clarity on the understanding of the topic by you as well as for all the others who are present here so always take this as an opportunity to demonstrate your expertise and strengthen your domain knowledge so whenever a question is asked take your time to respond if you don't know just say three words i don't know but adding to that is that i will look up and get back and make sure it's not enough if you say so make sure you sincerely do it go to the library do some more research and then find out the answer and then get back to them either personally or in your next seminar clarify all the doubts that were asked and what you have found out from your research work so those your library research or literary literature search whatever you have done so those that information has to be conveyed sincerely so that reflects on your personality how passionate you are and how sincere you are in your attempt so that adds on to your your personality so that becomes a habit so when you don't know you will start looking up in the uh, in the literature to get the right sort of answers so that is important if you don't know it's okay but the fact that you have made an attempt to find out itself is even better okay so next comes the evaluation the evaluating the feedback so this is generally done based on your performance taking into consideration certain parameters in terms of scientific content presentation skills and coverage of the uh, various scientific evidences you have gathered and put across from the various sources right but first of all you have to introspect yourself question yourself what should i retain what i should eliminate adapt or expand and then comes the feedback from the peers and the teachers okay so one thing you should remember all the comments the compliments the suggestions and the criticism that was given has to be viewed very very positively because it only helps you to identify areas of improvement and it helps in your own progression so never take it that somebody is behind you just to insult you or whatever it is so that's about you so what is the the role of your friends the fellow participants in the uh, seminar seminar is definitely not for beginners so you should all read and come so only if you have a basic knowledge of the topic that is being taught or uh, talked about it will only help you in furthering your knowledge base so everybody has to read and come the topic is given and it has been conveyed to everyone so you should read and come and sit in the topic because i already told you this is not meant for beginners so note down certain important points which you are not aware of in the seminar when you are seated and ask questions put forth your points and views 
And this is going to contribute for a better understanding of the subject. Like I told you, there is no audience in a seminar. All those who are present are participants. In a lecture, there are audience. But in a seminar, it's essentially a group discussion. So participation of each and every one is as important. So then only the purpose of a seminar is fulfilled. Okay, so that's about you all. Now let's find out what is the role of the faculty. We wear several hats here. So our role in a seminar is that of a moderator, a facilitator, content expert, and evaluator. So the discussion has to happen between you and all other participants. We are there only as actually a mute spectators, if you ask me for quite some time, is generally allow you to participate and we don't want to button. So we want to know what is happening. So you have to open up and have a discussion for your um, level. And we are there only to coordinate your areas of agreement or if the discussion is going astray, we shall interfere to bring it back on track, isn't it? So, and then clarify any doubts if it needs uh, to promote a better understanding and critically, of course, analyze the scientific content of your presentation, your skill of presentation and giving you the frank opinions, appreciations, as well as constructive criticisms. So that is our job. So the rest has to be done by you and your fellow colleagues only. So never ever think that we are all out to get you. Let me confess, we are not be all and end all of everything. We don't know everything under the sky. Out of donkey's years of experience, we certainly know a lot of things much more than you. But many a times it is you who impart as new knowledge, especially the recent advances that are happening in the field. And, and, and we agree on it. And we also learn a lot during every seminar that is being presented. This, uh, in fact, so our role that way is limited. This uh, reminds me of a shloka from uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita once again, that Acharya Padamadatte Padam Shishya Swamedaya Padam Sabrahmacharipyaha Padam Kalakramenasa, which means you learn about 25% from Acharya, that is your teacher. Padam Shishya Swamedaya. So from your own self-study, so from your own study, you're going to learn about 25%. Padam Sabrahmacharipyaha. So 25% from your peers, that is your classmates. And Padam Kalakramenacha, so the remaining 25 from your own experience over a period of time you're going to learn. But let me tell you, my dear friends, although our contribution is just 25%, that 25% is the most crucial one because that forms the foundation for the rest of your learning. So that is why it is always said that there is no replacement for a good teacher, isn't it? So that is what I have learned. That is what is my experience as a student. So this is something which I have, I, I have learned, endorsed. And of course, the Lord has said this long, long ago in our own um, scriptures. So with this, let me summarize the, the presentation. Seminar is essentially a group discussion. It gives an in-depth understanding of a topic. There is no audience in a seminar, all are participants. It is an invaluable tool in developing intellectual and verbal skills. Gather information while preparing in a disciplined, organized and a scientific way. Seminar should include introduction, body and conclusions. Use appropriate audiovisual aids because it will create an impact don't ever read your slides. Speak with conviction and passion. When it comes to questions or discussion time, consider it as an opportunity to demonstrate your expertise and strengthen your domain knowledge. All the comments, compliments, suggestions, and the criticisms that are given 
should be viewed positively because it helps to identify your own areas of uh, improvement and helps in your okay so finally to end an effective presentation coupled with active participation and constructive feedback will certainly result in the progress of the speaker in terms of all three domains of education namely knowledge skill and attitude and that my dear friends fulfills the purpose of a seminar so with this let me get back to the action cycle which i initially spoke spoke about i wish and end with a fond hope that i have been able to bring in that awareness on the need and the importance of a seminar in a postgraduate program comprehension on the various components and the steps involved in the preparation conviction on the skill of making an effective presentation is an asset to in your professional career and i am confident that you will carry this conviction and make a sincere attempt for an excellent seminar presentation back home so with this i know i do understand that it is it's it is a tough if a tough task not just for you but also for us as teachers right so but don't don't you worry we as teachers are there to help you at every step of your ascent till you reach your summit okay so with this enjoy the learning experience with a smile because smile begets smile and finally one of my favorite quotes for all of you lokesmin vivida nishta purna prokta mayanaga gnana yogena sankhya nam karma yogena yogina which means god has given us two clear paths the path of knowledge for the discerning and path of work for the active a judicious blend of both gnana and karma that is knowledge as well as hard work will lead one to perfection and ultimate satisfaction so for that my dear young friends and <clears throat> wish you all the very best and hope hope to interact with you some other time somewhere sometime thank you very much and uh, i thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunities to talk to all these young smart postgraduate students and uh, also the team iacd for the great initiative and the great job they have been doing thank you one and all thank you so much madam uh, indeed it was a very wonderful presentation uh, i think no one uh, uh, could have presented this topic uh, better than you uh, right topic for a right person i should say uh, seminar should not be uh, a formality it should impart knowledge and hold the concentration of all the audience for nearly 30 to 45 minutes so uh i guess all the uh, pg students uh, are going to update their skills of presentation and uh, you are always a role model to many including me a uh, very good acad acad academician uh, i must say uh, so thank you so much madam once again and uh, uh, i would like to present a token of appreciation from icda <clears throat> Thank you so much madam. Thank you Shashivar. Anyway the certificate did not come but it's okay. Yes, uh, sorry sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're not that's able. Okay to... that's okay no problem.
no problem doctor is not anyway thank thanks for those nice words i think this is come madam yeah yeah <laughs> that's all right <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you once again. And uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad sir for uh, excellently moderating this session. And uh, I, the IACD, proudly uh, honor you with a token of appreciation. Yes. Sorry. हमारे हेल्थ नहीं लाइन की है डॉक्टर गीता डॉक्टर गीता इट इज ओके डॉक्टर वी विल आई थिंक कृष्ण डॉक्टर कृष्ण प्रसाद इज आल्सो हैविंग सम इशू ऑफ दिस लाइन वी आर ऑडिबल नाउ सर सो thank you ma'am thank you so much and it was a really a fantastic lecture uh, now we will move on with the next lecture that is by dr shishir singh sir moderated by boya sir and i ask geeta madam to go ahead you should stop sharing screen yeah. good morning everyone I am Dr. Geeta Asthana. The moderator for the next presentation is Dr. A. C. Bhuyan Sir. Stop sharing, Dr. A. C. Sir. Shashi, you have to stop sharing. Present. You have to stop sharing the screen. Ah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Geeta Asthana. Moderator for the next presentation is Dr. A. C. Bhuyan Sir. Dr. A. C. Bhuyan. presently working as principal and head of department of conservative dentistry and endodontics regional dental college guwahati he also holds the prestigious post of the dean faculty of dental sciences under shri manta shankar deva university of health sciences government of assam an academician and clinician par excellence dr ac buyan was also one of the past president of federation of operative dentistry of india he has served three terms as a member of dental council of india in different capacities including as chairman of post graduate studies dr ac buyan also authored various chapters and textbooks in the specialty along with numerous publications in reputed international and national journals <laughs> over to dr ac buyan sir okay uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay thank you dr dr gita asthana for your very kind words okay good morning to all the participants and my heartiest welcome to newly joined pg students myself dr ac buyan like to thank iscd president dr v sundar shekhar and secretary dr mohan for giving me this wonderful opportunity to moderate a very important <coughs> session today on the topic journal club presentation which is the part of three years mds curriculum i take this opportunity to thank my dear friend dr dibendu mojundar chief advisor of the association for 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 guiding iacd in the hari direction dr dr mojundar has been the unique unique distinction of attending all the all the national conferences since its inception thank you dr mojumdar okay okay let me now introduce to this speaker not other than dr 
Sishir Singh, who is a very good friend of mine. Dr. Sishir Singh has uh, done his BDS MDS from, from the Nayars Dental College, Mumbai, in the specialty of conservative dentistry and endodontics. At present, he, he is the dean, professor, and head department of, of, of conservative dentistry and uh, endodontics in Nerul, okay, Navi, Mumbai. Dr. Singh has done his PhD in endodontics from, from Maharashtra University of Health Sciences, an active researcher. He has more than 30 research publications in the reputed uh, 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 national and, and international journals of his credit. She has also been the guest speaker at the various conference and the meetings in India and abroad. Dr. Singh was invited to work as a clinical teaching fellow in the Department of Endodontology, UCL, Eastman Dental Institute, uh, uh, London, UK. Dr. Singh worked in London for a year and was teaching the MSc and Master of Clinical, uh, clinical Dentistry students at the Eastman and has gained a lot of experience in teaching endodontics at the inter, international le a level. Dr. Dr. Singh is a diplomate of Indian Board of Micro Restorative and Endodontics and a mentor of IBME Fellowship Program at the at the Mumbai Center. He is also the postgraduate MDS guide at Terna Dental College for the MDS course. At the, at present. Dr. Singh is the editor in chief, the Journal of Conservative Dentistry. As all we know, the Journal Club has been the recognized as the efficient tool in PG teaching, which serves the multiple objectives that he includes improvement of critic skill keeping up to date with the recent published literature and slate forefront knowledge to guide the clinical practice and most importantly, maintaining leading heavy. Now I'd like to request uh, Dr. Cecil Singh to enlighten us with this today's presentation. Over to, over to Dr. Singh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, lovely, lovely. Can everybody hear me? Can I? Am I heard? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you, Bhuya, sir, for that lovely introduction. A very good morning to all of you all. And welcome uh, to the second day of the first MDS PG orientation program. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, the IACD EC, the secretary, IACD Mohan uh, Kumar, and the president of IACD, Dr. Uh, Chandrasekhar, for inviting me to give this uh, lecture. Uh, this whole program has really been going on very nicely. And a big thank you to Dr. Debendu Muzumdar, whose brainchild this was. So uh, I, as you know, I work at Tena Dental College, Nehru Navi, Mumbai. 
uh, compliments for you from my college and my faculty members. And uh, most importantly, uh, a warm welcome to all the new students who have joined our speciality of conservative dentistry and endodontics, and which is one of the hottest and most happening specialities in dentistry right now. So a hearty congratulations to all of y'all. And I'm sure your next three years is going to be really great. You're going to have a fantastic learning experience in these next three years. So having uh, uh, um, come through this uh, first day and come on to the second day, you must have realized that your three years MDS course has a lot of things to offer and a lot of things for you to learn. I have tried to sum up these. So you have to do your preclinical work in cons and endo. You have to do your theory. I think Vibha Madam talked about preclinical work, theory part, Vinita Madam talked. There is clinical work, then there is documentation. Documentation is, uh, I think Mamta Madam spoke to you all yesterday. Then there is the seminars with Rupa Madam spoke to you today. Journal clubs, then library dissertation, which is going to be the next lecture after mine. Case discussions are something which we covered a bit in documentation. Then you have to prepare yourself for the conferences where you'll be presenting papers or posters. Then your final dissertation, which is going to, uh, we have two long uh, lectures for you on that. And then you have to go ahead with the publication. I am today going to essentially talk to you about the journal club. So you will realize between yesterday and today that our speciality is the best why because you have a research component and you have a practical or a clinical component. So people who, are, who love research can pursue the research of the academics part. There are people who want to work with their skills and want to do cases so they can uh, uh, follow the clinical part. And there are many people like us who like to be academicians but also like to be clinicians, so we, we, we do both. So essentially we have a didactic component and we have got a practical component. Now, the journal club is a very important aspect that we all need to understand and would come more in your understanding or in the deep learning processes. That's part of your postgraduate course. And as Rupa Madam said earlier, that it is to be self-learning, which you have to inculcate self-learning, for which a journal club is very, very important, right? So as per the Dental Council of India and individual university requirements, each year, each postgraduate has to maintain, has to present at least five journal clubs. And at the end of three years, you have to have a minimum of 15 journal clubs presented. It's very, very important. It is a requirement of the university as well as the Dental Council of India. Okay? So let us now understand how we do this journal club or what is a journal club. We'll first talk about what the journal club is. Then we'll decide, talk about how to plan a journal club. And finally, we'll have a mock journal club presentation. Uh, I've divided the whole talk in these uh, three, three bits for you to understand and comprehend uh, properly. Now, when we talk about a journal club, you pick up a definition from Wikipedia or any of on, online on when you go on Google, you will get that the journal club is a group of individuals who meet regularly critically evaluate recent articles in the academic literature, such as the scientific literature, the medical literature, or the philosophy literature. They are usually organized around a defined subject in basic or applied research. Now, putting a little bit about the history, the first mention of a journal club was found in 1835 to 54 in the memoirs of a British surgeon, Sir James Paget. So William Osler is widely credited as establishing the first organized journal club by the Magdalene University in 1875. And Professor Mattinger in 1968, who wrote one of the first articles about journal clubs. So what does this journal club do? By picking up an article or a research article and you discuss it, Oh, live relay. Hello. Shishi, sir.
Um, sorry, there's been a temporary glitch. I think uh, Shishi sir is having some issues. He's going to get back to us shortly. Can you see me now? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, where did I stop? Did I stop here? Did you guys see this? You can't see your screen. Uh, you have to share your screen. Okay. Yeah. Did I stop here? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So we talked about the journal club. We talked about the history. So what does it actually do? It actually, by this discussion about the re research topics or what is going on new in our, uh, our particular specialty, we come out with points which are evidence-based to help us plan our future, to plan our patient treatments. This helps in diagnosis, etc. Having understood this, what we do is we discuss research topics on one minute. Just give me a minute. We discuss research work happening in our speciality and in interspeciality topics which are relevant to us. So that's very, very important where we uh, land up discussing really beautiful, beautiful topics on our speciality and sometimes even other specialities which can be relevant or important to our speciality. The aims of a journal club essentially are acquisition of critical appraisal skills, keeping up with the current literature, promotion of critical thinking, improving of reading habits and our improvement of clinical practice. What is critical thinking? I think we all have that. So when you are going on a date, as Madam uh, uh, Rupa Madam uh, told us, you all want to put your best foot forward. So when you're putting your best foot forward, the guys are dressing up, they're putting their perfumes, while the girl is going to check whether the guy is really dressed up well, and she's critically, critically evaluating his behavior. The boy also does the same with the girl. So this is, we already have that inculcated in us. The, the point here is to put that particular aspect of critical thinking and evaluation into our day-to-day -day work and into the journal club. And to be able to critically evaluate a journal club article, you have to keep up with the latest in literature, improve your reading habits and also your clinical practice. We have a lot of benefits from the journal club. There'll be a research literature, evidence-based practices are developed, Interview skills are developed. Academic debate happens. Interdepartmental social and professional networking takes place and finally publications are generated. So this is very, very important from networking point of view. You have open discussions where we can actually talk about a certain research project, why it was done, how it was done, what could have been done better, why the other thing, the other thing was not done. And we come out with a whole lot of different, different, different aspects. In my college, in my department, most of the time, whenever we are doing a journal club, we land up getting a final dissertation topic. So really, we uh, find the journal club very, very interesting from this point of view. Now, having understood what a journal club is, now let's see how to plan a journal club. This is extremely important. The steps here are very, very important and imperative that we do it in the right way. So when, what are we, and how do we do this? Is we have to select a journal, club, journal article. You have to read it, understand it, and then you have to present it to your staff and co-students. Right? There's a whole lot of work that happens. Here you can see, uh, this is a journal club in progress. I think this was when we had the IACD. We do this uh, twice a week. Uh, but this was done especially when we had the IACD exchange students who had come. 
I think there were some who had come from Ahmedabad and there were some who had come from, uh, uh, I think from the Kurg Institute, from Dr. Ponapa's college. So this is the time when we had one a journal club specially for them. So when you select an article, it has to be either endo-related, cons-related or dental materials related, mostly relevant to our specialty. And you look for them in our specialty journals first. Sometimes you may have to look in other specialty journals if they are related articles to our specialty. Now, where do you look for all of them? We have a huge, huge collection of national and international journals available. Okay, these are a few, like you have the International Endodontic Journal, the Journal of Endodontics, the Australian Endodontic Journal, Dental Materials, uh, uh, we have Restorative Dentistry and Endodontics, Operative Dentistry, JADA, DCNA, JADA is American Dental Association. Same way we have Endodontic Topics, Quintessence, Acta Odontologica, Triple O's, British Dental Journals, Journal of Aesthetic and Restorative Dentistry, and European Endodontic Journal, the Ira Iranian Endodontic Journal, Saudi Endodontic Journal, European Journal of Dentistry, Brazilian Dental Journal. You'd be surprised to know most, many of our Indian researchers have papers published in all these journals. But here are a, is, is a list of few of the journals which are really very, 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 very important, right? But the most important, I would always say, is the Journal of Conservative Dentistry, which is the official publication of the Indian Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, of which I am the editor. Uh, this is a journal which is uh, a PubMed index journal, and uh, we have the pleasure of publishing uh, articles of our national uh, researchers and teachers and students, as well as international publications. Right now, for the year 2020, we have already had 600 papers uploaded for us to process and we are in the uh, um, process of getting all the publications out. So we are having a great time uh, reading the type of research that is being done in India and abroad. So do open up this journal as part of being an IICD member, you have access to all these uh, journals any which ways. Right. So when you select a journal club article, you might choose a topic like if you're going to do irrigating solutions and you're going to pick up a research on that. What is the efficacy of an irrigating solution? Then you take an article depending on which journal is it, which year is it, and evaluate it. You can, you can see if there are any trials done, which I call randomized controlled trials, right? How do you look for this? You have to look in the various indexes, right? Now the indices or the indexes that are, that are there are available online wherein you can get access to uh, the various journals. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. And yesterday, I think Vinita Madam gave you a very important tip uh, on how to get this. So the Dental Council of India considers following an indexing agency such as Scopus, PubMed, Medline, Embase, uh, Medica or Index Medicos. Uh, here is, uh, if you go on to Google and you put in PubMed, you will get this particular page. And this PubMed here uh, is, uh, is very, very useful for us. I'll talk a little bit about it later on once we progress into the next part of our, uh, my talk. So what are the types of articles that you have to look at or what are available for you for your journal club? You have got four types of articles. You have original research, you have case reports, you have reviews, and you have systematic reviews. Okay, so now let's understand uh, what's an original article or a research. And this is the paper by Rupa Madam. I am going to uh, do the dummy or the mock uh, um, journal club presentation on this particular paper, which has been published in the Journal of Conservative Dentistry. Here, a original or a article will show you total thorough research done on a particular topic and then whatever the findings are have been published, the method and methodology is written, the introduction is written, the discussion is done, the results are given, and then you reach a conclusion. So we'll talk about this a little later. The next is case reports. Now case reports is when you're doing a very great case or a challenging case or something that is really uh, different, okay? You 
document that yesterday dr uh, mamta told you about documentation and then you write a case report here is one by dr karunakar he spoke to you yesterday about uh, the iacd and your friend for life so here is one uh, by his team his group then you have a review article the review article is very very important it comes most of the times um, where you get a a, a holistic or a larger uh, picture of uh, a, a topic and here you have seen this was just published last month in our journal which is a position statement by of the iacd for managing uh, dental patients during the covid-19 pandemic here we have dr mamta kaushik our president chandrashekar sir our secretary mohan kumar and paromita muzam muzumdar our ec member who has talked about this then you have something called a systematic review a systematic systematic review is much more in details it is much more sensitive okay wherein you have to follow a lot of guidelines you have to follow the prisma guidelines you have to follow the medline pubmed index guide a lot of lot of detailing is there you have to try and register this i think uh, dr um, our next uh, speaker um, uh, dr sonali taneja will be talking about this in, as part of a library dissertation so now let us look at the selection criteria when you are selecting a paper maximally the impact factor has to be good that it has to be really read well it has to have a lot of um factor about that research and then original research articles are preferred when you are doing a journal club uh because if you see the review articles will give you will just write down everything or in enumerate things that have been done or research that has been done but an original research article is more uh uh more dynamic and you'll be able to discuss things better so what is an impact factor an impact factor is when the total number of times a journal article was cited during the last two years is divided by the total number of citable articles in the journal during those two years the journal's impact factor for that particular year is counted right so you have the joes you have the iejs we have which have a very high impact factor and this way you can understand uh, what is the quality of the journal and the type of research being published in those journals right so having understood how to plan a journal club now let's do a small mock of a journal club presentation so when you're presenting a paper or when you're doing a journal club presentation you have to first select your paper that you're going to present most often the staff will give you the paper relevant to a topic in my college i'm sure in other colleges also be plan the journal club with very important topics so there is a continuation kept between the various important topics of a speciality you need to take that hard copy of the paper and share it with the department staff with your co pgs or you can also email them a soft copy not only the presenter but also the co pgs must read and come for the journal club presentation and the presenter has still a lot of more work to be done right he has to read the paper study the paper in depth evaluate the paper compare it with similar research papers and then the presenter still has some more work he has to prepare a good powerpoint ideally i think about 30 to 35 slides are enough it should be about 45 minutes to 1 hour and present or clinically evaluate that particular journal article now when you are doing your journal ka presentation you need to talk about the introduction you have to talk about who has written the paper you have to bring up the hypothesis appraise the evidence base discuss or highlight the study design is the matter thorough results what are the results that came up then discussion and interpretation of the same the clinical content or importance and the outputs that come out from that particular article these are very very important aspects that the student needs to cover you have to summarize you have to be a critic you have to talk about the strengths the positive the negatives the weaknesses the limitations and what are the unanswered questions all these have to be done without a bias okay and you have to then come out and present the whole thing to you, uh, whole thing uh, uh, this whole uh, particular um, article in this format for us to evaluate your
What is the research question? Is the study design appropriate? What are the methods used? Does this study advance the current practices? Were there some newer modern techniques better than this? And what are the next steps in interpreting this data? So here's another journal club in progress where our PGs are presenting. You can see the staff sit behind uh, listening to all of them. We generally also at the journal club, we have some tea and coffee to just uh, keep us going. And here is the paper that we are going to talk about. This paper is by Rupa Nadik, madam. Now, if you read the first page, you will see you've got the name of the paper, you've got the authors, you've got a little bit of the introduction. So the topic as it comes is, you mentioned, comparison and evaluation of the surface deformation of high flex controlled memory and high flex discharge machining nickel titanium rotophiles and cyclic fatigue after instrumentation and heat sterilization and in vitro study. Right? Right, important here is you come to know that this is an in vitro study. You can have an in vivo study, you can have a ex in vivo study and so on and so forth. Now, when you go through the introduction, which we talked about here, you will also know that what is the point that the author is making here? The person is talking about nickel titanium rotary file, which have been in use from 1988 for endodontic procedures, which have made root canal therapy simpler and faster. So you realize it's all about nickel titanium. It's about rotary files, right? And you, then the next sentence that comes is, in spite of all the advantages, the possibility of unexpected fracture of nickel titanium rotary files within the canals because of cyclic and spectral and torsional fatigue distresses the clinicians. So you have nickel titanium, you have rotary, but there is a downside. The downside is there is cyclic fracture fatigue, there's torsional fatigue. So what these authors thought was to prevent these procedural complications, many manufacturers are coming up with various techniques to improve these mechanical properties and we come out with better alloys to solve these problems. So the rationale or the main gist of why Madam decided to do this is to examine the pre-use, post-use and post-heat sterilization surface properties of high flex CM and high flex EDM files in three dimensional method using optical profilometry and cyclic fatigue resistance to these instruments after instrumentation and subsequent heat sterilization not available. So they are testing high flex CM and high flex EDM files using optical profilometry and cyclic fatigue resistance from of these instruments after doing instrumentation that is using them in the tooth and then subsequently heat sterilizing them. So they found that if these two things which were not done, we find out, then we could come out with something interesting. So then you go into the next part. When you start reading and in details, you will see there is subjects and methodology. Then there is something important about surface roughness and deformation, cyclic fatigue, how it was tested. Why was surface roughness and deformation done and how it was tested? Then you'll end up with the results and then you come on to the discussion. So if you look at the material and methods, most important was is the inclusion criteria. What is the exclusion criteria? When you read it, you will know that intact extracted mandibular molars were taken. The root curvatures of only between 30 to 60 degrees were taken. That makes the, the, this particular research more sensitive, more interesting. The exclusion criteria were broken teeth with non-intact roots were taken, straight root were not taken, straight roots were not taken, and the root curvatures below 30 degrees or above 60 degrees were not taken. Why did they, this group take only between 30 to 60? Because most of the time we find out that we have a curvature of between 30 to 60. The incidence of 30 to 60 degrees root curvature is very high. So having understood this, what was the sample size? So about 60 intact extracted permanent molars were taken. They were divided into two groups. Group A was high flex CM and group A was high flex EDM. So the sample size was 60, but one group N equal to 30 and N equal to 30 was the group A and group B. This is how you present or you come out with what is written in that particular paper. You have to extract this information from the paper, right? Then 
the next thing that comes up is the null hypothesis right some of the papers would tell you we felt that no difference was there between both these groups and then finally you might find a difference between these groups then you talk about what did they test what these two groups of hyplex em and hyplex edm what did they test they tested for surface roughness and deformation and they tested for cyclic fatigue testing so the surface roughness and deformation was tested using an optical profilometer which will come out and bring out the surface roughness the deformations of the cutting blades and the flutes so when they were used when they are used for preparing the root canals this of profilometer will find out if there were any deformations in the cutting blades and flutes then we also tested for cyclic fatigue testing because the groups were further subdivided into two groups of 50 <laughs> that is a1 and b1 and a2 and b2 where the file were tested inside a custom made stainless steel artificial canal having a curvature of 30 or 60 degrees with a 5 mm radius of curvature so there are two aspects to this research okay so two bits have been done over here checked for surface roughness and deformation and then cyclic fatigue for which they tested it on a particular contraption that they had made or a custom made stainless steel artificial canal which had a curvature of 30 to 60 so you see they had tried to maintain the curvature on the extracted teeth also they selected 30 to 60 and even when they have done this stainless steel artificial canal then goes whatever they found that particular data that they have found or noted you have to put it to st statistical analysis so you have to have the null hypothesis you have to look for the significance level of the study the power of the study the what statistical tests we use and what statistical software was used right so you have to go through all this and you will realize that they use the spss software they use the man with me test uh, to compare and they use the friedman test and wilcoxon sign test to compare between the different subgroups so in the main groups they use the man with me test and the friedman test and the wilcoxon test was used for the subgroups and the significance the level of significance was set at p below 0.05 this is very very important when you understand how you do the statistics you realize how sensitive your particular research is and the group has given importance for all the subgroups that is the part 1 the part 2 as well as the subgroups in the part 2 so they have used different tests to see this then you go through the discussion you go through the discussion carefully bring out the important points the author has presented discuss these pros and cons the advantages and disadvantages or why they did this technique why they did not do any other technique why they used the profilometer they could have used something else but there must be some good points about the profilometer then why did it decided to do the cyclic fatigue testing okay so all these things have to come in your in their discussion which you have to highlight and when you go through this the next part you see they have tabulated what they found and they have also reached a conclusion and that conclusion would be that there was a higher level of surface roughness and deformation compared between high flex cm file there was higher surface roughness and deformation compared to high flex edm files do edm provided better preservation of nickel titanium file surface clinically usage in severely curved canals when compared with conventional grinding method so they also found that the edm file had a better resistance to cyclic fatigue at both 300 and 300 600 curvatures than high flex cm so this is what this particular group concluded you have to highlight these conclusions and then you have to bring up related articles now realize friends you have it the related articles have to be the same that is there in the bibliography but that is where we look at how deeply you have studied this you have to pick up parallel articles which are related to the same topic so you go back to your pubmed now if you type in rupan article you will now get 10 results for rupan article's articles that's not going to help so you have to pick up like the high flex control memory right 
so if you talk about that and you put cyclic fatigue of high flex control memory files and you put a search engine in uh, your pubmed you will land up with about 54 articles on cyclic fatigue of high flex control files you need to at least read the most important ones understand them and then say that similar articles similar research was done and this is what the research found out these are see there are so many articles on that and but in that particular paper they used another technique this way you are going to talk about the good points the bad points what could be done what could not be done and you will be comparing this paper with other similar research papers you can also point out some errors or some shortcomings that came out in the research and then which was better why it was so and why and each time a researcher does a research he or she has something in their mind why they have done this technique why they use this particular material they use this methodology you have to bring out all that thing okay and then you come out explaining everything in details so having understood this these are a few papers that are found online this is a paper in the british journal of hospital medicine on how you prepare for and present at a journal club and there was another one that was that i found in the journal uh, of research in dental sciences by the by touch now from goa dental college you could always refer to these and they'll be able to make you understand how you can go about with your journal club so before i end my presentation i always Uh, talk about this Edgar Dale's uh, triangle of learning, where I see and I forget, I hear and I remember, I do and I understand. Whatever you read, after two weeks, only ten percent of that you will remember. Whatever you hear, after twenty, uh, after two weeks, only twenty percent you will remember. Whatever you see, you will remember after twenty per after two weeks, only thirty percent. But when you are watching a movie. or looking at an exhibit or a demonstration or seeing it on location after 2 weeks you will be able to remember 50% of what we see and hear now if you participate in a discussion or you're giving a talk you will be able to remember 70% and if you are doing a dramatic presentation simulating the real experience doing the real thing 90% of what we say and Right? so this is a very important research finding so it's very important that discussion giving a talk and doing a good presentation experiencing the real thing is what is very very important um uh, dear friends um uh, i think i conclude my presentation over here many thanks for a patient hearing a little bit about critically evaluating my presentation uh if you see i have used a lot of colors i have used a lot of backdrops i felt when i was in england that the britishers generally have very dull presentations and if you read david copperfield or charles dickens it's always so gloomy and i felt i am from india from a tropical country uh mumbai where we have a lot of colors and so i always tend to put a lot of colors in my presentation but again you have to be very mindful of what colors you are using and how well you are doing it So once again a big thank you to all of you all for the patient listening i hope you all have got something from this journal club presentation thank you very much guyan sir please unmute yourself yes yeah, sir can you unmute I have unmuted. No, no, no. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Doctor Sishir Singh, for the excellent and well explained in depth presentation. Doctor Sishir has been always a versatile and uh, very pro prolific uh, uh, in giving the. in giving the lecture so buyan sir you have to unmute yourself buyan sir 
Bhiya, sir, you have to unmute. I think you muted yourself. Bhiya, sir. So you you have again muted yourself. I think we'll have to call, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, sir. Okay. okay. Okay, uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, uh, thank you. Ma'am Geeta, ma'am, I think you should proceed. You can yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Chishir, sir, it was indeed a very good presentation and I'm sure the students would have benefited by the insight, in-depth uh, discussion you did about how a journal club presentation should be made. Now I'd like to present certificate of appreciation to Dr. Shishir sir as well as to Dr. Buyan sir. Ma'am, you have to share your screen. Yes, sir, I'm doing it. Yeah, I think there is some glitch. It's not being shared. Uh, it comes and it goes away. Yes, sir. It's okay. okay. Thank it's you safe. so much. Okay, Thank sir. You. To Chishit, sir, and to Dr. Thank Buyan, sir. Thank no. you, IACD, for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Over you. to the head office. Thank you, Shishi, sir. Thank you, Buyan, sir. It was indeed a wonderful lecture, Shishi, sir, as usual. Thank you. Uh, and now I would ask Dr. Jigyasa to go ahead and introduce the moderators for the next session. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, uh, I, Dr. Jigyasa Dohan, working as professor at Postgraduate Institute of Dental Sciences. Yes. I think I'm audible. Yes. 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 Uh, at uh, uh, Postgraduate Institute of Dental Sciences, Rotak. Uh, welcome all my uh, respected teachers, my seniors, colleagues, and dear PG students for this session on libra uh, library dissertation by Dr. Sonali Taneja. Uh, I'm thankful to President uh, IACD, Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir, uh, mm -hmm. Secretary IACD, Dr. Mohan, and President-elect Dr. Vibha Hegre, ma'am, for this opportunity to introduce this session. And it is my privilege to introduce our moderator for this session, Dr. Lakshmi Balaji, ma'am. Uh, ma'am uh, ma is a professor in the Department of Conservative and Endodontics in Sri Ramachandra Dental College, Porur. Uh, she finished her uh, MBS in the year 1999 from Savita Dental College. And she is among the uh, first to achieve her PhD in uh, the year 2009. Uh, and then she followed subsequently obtained her uh, fellowship in 2015 from uh, Royal College of Glasgow and 2016, the another fellowship from Royal College of Edinburgh. And ma'am has over 20 years of uh, PG teaching experience and she has uh, various national and international publications to her credit. Uh, I welcome you, ma'am. Uh, over to you, ma'am, Dr. Lakshmi Balaji. Thank you, Dr. Jigat, sir, for this wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, like, uh, I take this opportunity uh, to thank sincerely the IACD head, uh, head office, the, the president, Dr. Chandrasekhar, and the secretary, Dr. Mohan, for the opportunity given, and even Dr. Rajeshwari and all the other IACD team members for this excellent opportunity to project our uh, orient the first orientation, which is a lovely idea. And um, now I would like to uh, introduce our speaker, Dr. Sonali Taneja. She is a professor and head of the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, ITSCD SR Murad Nagar, and Dean Student Support and Relations. She completed her graduation and master's in conservative dentistry and endodontics from DAV Yamuna Nagar and was adjudged as the best graduate student for attaining the highest marks in BDS aggregate and also adjudged as the best postgraduate of her batch. 
Dr. Sonali Taneja has published 50 articles in peer-reviewed national and international scientific okay. journals, most of which are PubMed indexed. She has co-authored six books. She has been postgraduate guide for the last 14 years. She's a reviewer of many national and international journals and on the editorial board of JCD and has many awards and medals to her credit. She has been the past vice president of the IACD and EC member of IES. I welcome you, ma'am, to share your thoughts about how to make the library desk station very interesting. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning, one and all. Am I audible? Am yes, I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi, for the, your kind words of introduction. So I, at the outset, I would like to uh, congratulate IACD for this welcoming initiative, which they have started from this year onwards. And I also take the opportunity of welcoming a batch of 2020 postgraduates to Khan's end of family. I wish you all a very happy and fruitful journey ahead. Hope your next three years are going to enlighten you as well as they are pleasant for you. Coming to the topic, library dissertation, make it interesting. I'll be covering this topic under the following headings. What is library dissertation? The word liber, it's a Latin word and it means book and dissertation means your discussion. So basically it involves reading all the literature related to that particular subject at, which is available at that particular point of time and bringing forth your critical review and understanding of that subject. So no wonder just to increase the scientific acumen of the students as well as to increase the level of understanding of the students DCI has made it mandatory and has included it as in the guidelines for the PG students. And they have also stipulated a deadline for the same that it has to be finished within 18 months of the start of your curriculum. Now, what is the reasoning behind this exercise? This exercise is a preliminary exercise to train the students how to go about doing their thesis dissertation and it, it equips the student to bet for better usage of your IT tools so that they can make themselves abreast, abreast with the latest developments in that particular specialty. They also come to know about various research methodologies and then they can do the short studies. They can present those short studies at various forums, various conferences. And lastly, but very importantly, they come to know how to collect, compile, and to interpret the data. So what all falls under the purview of library dissertation? First, most of, because there are no fixed guidelines. I have done a survey. I have been asking an indirect survey from all the HODs, from all the colleges. There have not been any fixed guidelines for the library dissertation. Most of the colleges, they go for literature review. And if you want to challenge yourself, some of the colleges have gone for systematic review with meta-analysis. And sometimes because we learn more by actually doing it. So some of the colleges, they have incorporated short study along with the narrative review. So what is the difference between a narrative review and a systematic review? A narrative review is examining of all the current literature related to a very broad topic. Where a systematic review is systematically searching, appraising and synthesizing research evidence, which is focused on a narrow a research question. And literature review or a narrative review does not, may or may not include comprehensive searching it may or may not include quality assessment, but systematic review makes it mandatory for comprehensive searching 
as well as quality assessment. The quality is assessed in terms of your strengths, limitations, the biases present in the study. And narrative review, as the name suggests, it is typically narrative. There is systematic review. It is less of narrative and it, the findings are presented in a tabular form. It is more of a tabular summary. A narrative review is basically a chronological, conceptual, and a thematic analysis. And the systematic review, you have to give your own point of views regarding the studies which have been selected. And then you have to give, you have to point out the lacunae in the literature and you have to give recommendations for future research. So this is an example of what is the difference between a literature and a systematic review. So a review of calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is a very broad topic. So it is a literature review. But when we narrow it down to a research question, like are, does calcium hydroxide uh, decrease the fracture resistance of a tooth, then it is a small topic. And the topic, and this becomes a systematic review because we have a research question involved in it. Then what are the prospects? of doing this exercise means what are we going to end up with? We can always publish it as a literature review, but keeping in mind, I have seen that most of the well-reputed or high impact factor journals, they invite narrative reviews from the people or the experts in that particular field. So it is a better option to opt for systematic review if you desire to have your publication. Then third is you can publish it as a book. But, but here I would like to stress the point that LD manuscript as such cannot be just translated into a publication. You will have to do a lot of editing. You'll have to make it crisp, concise to be publishable. So a lot of work has to be done even after doing your LD to make it, to get it published. Now coming to the topic selection, how do you select the topic? I know all the first years, because in the first years, your mind is totally blocked. You are not able to choose what topic to go for. You keep on asking your peer groups in other colleges, your seniors, all of, but here I would like to suggest is start reading. Read with the open mind. And once you get into the habit of reading articles, you will come to know about the recent trends, the recent advancements which have taken place in this specialty. And definitely one or two topics will definitely spike your interest. Then you can take those topics to your guides, your mentors. And uh, I feel as being a mentor and a guide, I feel we all of us are suffering from being there, done that syndrome. Means, okay, when the student brings the topic to us, we always say, oh, this has already been done better. This has already been done. It is a very common topic. So before you take the topic to your guide, may ensure that that particular topic has not been done in the department in the last five to 10 years. Then further, once the topic is of common interest to you, as well as to your guide, your guide would give you further directions, how to pursue. Then for this, once your topic is finalized, you will need to read lots of, lots of articles. During our days, we never had those electronic databases. So we had to go to the library, and sit hours and hours in the library searching for the relevant text. But you people are fortunate to have those electronic databases. These are some of the databases which are there, which are there on the right, you can see. These are the databases for, from which you can search your relevant articles. And all the articles which are available, they may not be available in the form of full text, except for those like open access or open or a free access articles. There in this case, you just have to click the link and the full text is freely available. 
you'll have to go to the department library, you'll have to ask the librarian if the college has subscription for those e-access to those articles or not. And if it is not there, then last, the Sci Hub is your savior. In this, you just have to insert the link, DOI number in the dialog box, and you can download, download the entire article. Now, all articles which are available on site, on online, they will not be a high quality research. So how to select the articles? You have to go for your citation classics, the articles which have been most cited, and the articles, the, the recent articles which have been published in high impact factor journals as just told by Shishir sir. So now the question arises, how many articles do I need to? So I, there is no fixed rule to how many articles you need to go for, for your library dissertation. But as an unwritten rule, it is a minimum of 40 to 50 articles, out of which 10 to 20 should be your classics and 30 to 40 should be your recent work. But again, I would emphasize, please do not go by numbers. You have to cover the topic in its entirety. Some of the topics may require more number of articles. So there is no fixed rule to it. So now you will, would be wondering, what are those citation classics? Citation classics are basically those groundbreaking studies which have caused or have, which have made a significant impact in that particular field. And they have carved a path for future studies related to that particular topic. So these are some of the examples of your citation classics like your root canal anatomy of human permanent teeth by vertuses. Whenever you will have any study related to anatomy, this article is, would be cited more often. Then how to find this study? There are many articles which have already compiled these most cited articles. These are some of the examples of those articles which have cited the most cited article, either related to that particular subject, means the first one, the top cited articles in regenerative, it is related to regenerative endodontics, or it is most cited articles related, uh, published in that particular journal. Another clue, of finding articles is this in this slide, you can see that what is the common factor that is P. Ahmed. So you can search for the authors who are known to do our work in that particular field. I can give you another example. If you are going for something like biofilms, you know that Dr. Anil Kishan has done a lot of work on biofilms. So if you just type if you go by the author's name, you will have a whole list of articles related to that particular subject. So you will have the clues. You have to catch those clues. And it is just like a treasure hunt. One clue will lead to another. And ultimately, it will lead to your treasure trove of knowledge, which is just hidden in this vast web of your online articles. Then what? are those high impact factor journals as told by Shishir sir. These are some of the high impact factor journals related to our specialty and some which are allied ones. So you should always search for the. In fact, I'll always advise that you should frequently browse through the sites of these journals so that you develop a habit of reading the articles as well as you will be knowing about what all advancements are taking place in your specialty. Then another tip to find relevant articles is most of the search engines, they have these options like similar articles, related articles, related items, recommended articles. All this would help nav navigate further and to search the articles related to your topic. Then while you are doing so, 
you have to filter a lot of data because all the articles may not be of worth to your to, uh, to your ld topic so for that you need to develop the art of skim reading what is skim reading it allows you to quickly grasp what the article is about and you have to and it will allow you to see whether it is of any value to your research or not and for that you need to preview overview and review in previewing first you have to be very clear what you want and once you are clear then you read the abstract and you find whether what you want is there in the abstract or not if it is not there discard it if it is there then you go further that is go to overview in this you start reading the article to detect the main idea in that article read vertically horizontally think like an author as if you are an author and think whether you have got the main idea what you are looking for if you have got it then you review it review means then you read the article word to word and jot down the salient points which you may be using that in your library dissertation now before you come to the academic writing part once you have selected all your articles start with your academic writing but before you start writing your main uh, manuscript what you do is make a rough outline of the contents get those contents approved from your mentor or the guide and then you make this outline it will it is differs it differs in narrative as well as systematic review in case of narrative review first you will have to give your introduction in this was beautifully explained by dr rupa ma'am in introduction what you need to give is the importance of that subject the significance of that particular topic then you will have to talk about the knowledge the current knowledge which is available in the literature related to that subject and the lacuna present in the literature in that you will have to uh, you will be telling about for the studies which are for the topic or the ones which are contradicting studies all those studies have to be mentioned and then in the end you will be talking about the aim why you are going for that particular topic what your library dissertation aims at this is how you will be going you talk about the importance the current knowledge discuss all schools of thoughts the supporting and contradicting evidences after you have done up with your introduction now you should be talking about the historical perspective i'll just say give an example that if you are doing a ld on some material then you will have to give historical evolution of that material then it is followed by review of literature this review of literature can be chronologically based means on how it has uh, evolved or it can be conceptual or it can be thematic then you start writing the sub chapters the chapters on your sub topics to make it interesting i would suggest that you do not cut copy paste try to write the chapters in your own words incorporate lots of diagrams the flow charts the thematic diagrams and images you can take those images from the textbook or from the articles and if you have chosen a clinical topic then you can even use those images of the cases which have been done by you or by your seniors in the department so this is how you can make your chapters more readable and more interesting then coming to the discussion part discussion is nothing just the gist of what you have already written in your chapters it is basically a summarizing of all the chapters and in the end you should always give your conclusion in the conclusion you just give your critical view also as well as you will also compile the conclusion of all the articles which you have or most of the articles which you have 
included in your library dissertation. This was about literature review. Now coming to systematic review. The introduction is almost the pattern is the same, except for that in this systematic review, you will have to talk about the research question. Then you will have to talk about the search strategies. What all search engines you have used? What all keywords, the MESH terms used, the language you have used, the date, the period from which the search was, uh, from what year to what year the search was taken into consideration, the search algorithms. And then all those findings you will have to present in the form of tables. And in the discussion, you will have to critically analyze the selected articles. Critically anal anal analysis means the strengths, the shortcomings of those articles with respect to the bias which is present. And in the end, in the conclusion, you will talk about the gaps in the literature and you will give your own recommendations for future research. So I'll just tell, show you a flow chart, a workflow for your systematic review. First of all, you formulate a research question. You have built a question, check whether that question, particular research question has been registered as a protocol or not. For that, you will have to check these following sites, Prospero, OSF registries, Cochrane. And if they have not been registered in the last five years, then start developing your research protocols as per the guidelines laid by PRISMA, PRISMA guidelines for abstract. This is, these are the guidelines you can always refer to. And in the research protocol, write about your objectives, the eligibility of the study, the methods of extraction of your data, the statistical analysis which will be performed, and then you come to your literature search. In the literature search, you will be talking about what all databases you have searched, the years you have covered, the first run, updates, the terminologies, search terms, which or the keywords you have uh, uh, taken into consideration, and the number of results you have got after putting all those keywords. These are the list of, this is the example, if it is, was a thing, uh, a review question was calcium hydroxide as a liner. So you can use these as the keywords. Then after that, you have to filter out those studies. The ones which are non-relevant, irrelevant, you will be excluding those studies. Then you will, the ones which are relevant, will be further subjected to assessment by two independent reviewers and their consensus of acceptance would be taken for further consideration. And what all studies these two reviewers have rejected or excluded, the log should be maintained for the reasons for exclusion. So this is how, this is how that flow chart is that you can see that from all the databases, PubMed, Web of Science, Cochrane, Scopus, IBEX, BBO, Lilax, you have got 1537 articles. And after removing duplicates, you have got 1067. You have screened them and 1047 were found to be your irrelevant. The relevant were, ones were 20. Now these 20 will be subjected to assessment by independent reviewers. And when they found that they excluded three articles and they have given the reasons for the exclusion, why they have excluded those three articles and the remaining 17, they were included in qualitative synthesis. And out of this, if it was a meta-analysis, six studies was included in quantitative synthesis. So, once your studies has been assessed, now you have to appraise those studies as per the protocol. Means you have to appraise those studies as for, for the methodological quality. You have to rule out the biases present in the studies. These are some of the examples of the biases. 
these are selection bias because of uh, wrong random sequence gen generation or because of wrong allocation concealment, then there are performance bias when the person or the participants, they are not blinded, then that leads to performance bias. Then there can be biases if the person who is uh, evaluating the outcome, he is also not blinded of the intervention procedures that leads to your detection bias. And if there are more number of dropouts, it leads to your attrition bias. And if those particular studies have, uh, if they have just done selective reporting, selective reporting means they have reported a part of the study, means the positives of the studies, but have not reported the negatives of that studies. That leads to your reporting bias. And on the basis of these biases, we categorize the studies as lower risk, unclear, or a high risk studies. So once you have appraised it, now you will be extracting the data. For that, you will be creating a data extraction form. And this is the site from which you can take the data collection form. Then you start analyzing the re result and tabulating it. This is the table. The first five columns. In this first five columns, you will be uh, tabulating your findings, and then you will be interpreting those results. The last four columns will are the columns for interpreting the results. In this, you will be jotting down the strengths, the limitations of your study, and of whether it has got any implication in the clinical scenario, and whether it has any prospect for future research or not. So this is how you will be interpreting your result. And this is how you would be conducting a systematic review. So it is a very long topic, but time is short. So I've just summarized this topic. I know the people who are going for systematic review, I would suggest that you should attend workshops. There are some online courses from John Hopkins University for conducting systematic review. So before you start doing it, you can uh, uh, attend those courses and then you can start conducting your review. Then now we will be uh, talking about how to write your references. References have to be written in Vancouver format. It is preferably written at the end of the library dissertation bit, but I have seen in some of the colleges, they write the references after every chapter. Then they have to be numbered in chronological order, in the order where they have appeared in the text. And this is the example. If that reference is taken from the book, you will have to write the authors of that book then you will have to talk about, uh, you will have to write about the name, the edition, the publisher, as well as the year of publication. And if it is from a chapter from the book, in that first, the names of the authors of that particular chapter, the title of that chapter, then the authors of the book in which that chapter is there, then the title, and then the edition, publishers, uh, name as well as the year of publication. And for the ebook, also the example is similar. And if it is a notification, if you have referred to a notification uh, from a government publication, the example is this. And if you have to cite a journal article, you will be citing it in the Vancouver format uh, as shown. And here's you can see J Dent. J Dent stands for. Journal of Dentistry. Mind it, the abbreviations which you will be using here should be strictly according to the style of your index medicus. And for that, you can consult this uh, NL, NLM website. You can note down the website. Then another tip, how to cite your articles is very, every article you will see there is a column. 
a column where it is written how to cite that particular article. You can just copy and paste that, and you can also take the help of your reference managers. Like these are the softwares which will help you manage your references. And Mendeley is one of the popular softwares for man managing of your references. Now you know that your uh, yeah, review or uh, library dissertation is typically a review. Review means it is not a primary research, it is a secondary research. So due credit has to be given to the people who have performed the original research by quoting them as references. And if you fail to do so, it will amount to plagiarism. So plagiarism is the unreferenced use of somebody else's published or unpublished ideas, or you are just copying the entire article in some other language in somebody else's name. So that all amounts to plagiarism. So how to check it? So after you are done up with your entire manuscript, always check for plagiarism. And these are the common softwares, best softwares, for checking your plagiarism, your authenticate, your cross-check. So please do check for plagiarism before you go for your printing. Then how will you be assessed? You will be continuously assessed by your mentors or the guides, that is your periodic assessment. The one which is on right is your periodic assessment form. And at the end, after submission will be your overall assessment. That is the first form that is your overall assessment for your dissertation. So this is to be done by your guides and co-guides. Now coming to the LD journey, what I have seen, some of you, they may, might start with great enthusiasm. And in the midst, you just get intimidated by the project and ultimately in the end, you just end up in despair. But I will say, stay patient and trust your journey. So you have to be consistent and for consistency, you will have to have a timeline for all the work which you have to do in a manuscript. Most of the universities or colleges, they have spelled out the timeline, but if you don't have, please make your own timeline. So this timeline is a take home message for all those who are attending this lecture also. First, you have to read, read lot, read with open mind, finalize the topic, find time for searching relevant scientific literature, gather the data, Create a rough outline, get your rough outline approved, then start writing chapters, get them weekly, get them checked weekly or bi-weekly from your mentors or the guides. Start compiling, add graphs, charts, diagrams, give finishing touches, submit to your mentor for final reading, do a proof reading, get it printed, and ultimately, finally, submit it on time. So if you strictly adhere to your timeline, I will say that your LD journey is going to be less stressful and it would be a, a thing to learn about. It, and it will motivate to you to do better when you come to your thesis dissertation. So I'll end this presentation with the quotes that consistency is the fee for the journey as well as the key to the destination. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the IACD team for giving me opportunity to talk to the young students and giving me a platform for this. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. It was an excellent presentation. I think it was crystal clear and uh, the, all the postgraduates who have come in knew would benefit like anything with this. Uh, like um, what I was uh, like, what there was one question which is uh, which they're asking like, what is the actual uh, difference between library dissertation and your thesis dissertation? Library dissertation is basically, it's a secondary 
research means you are researching on somebody else's research the already that research has been done and you are just compiling those articles bringing about reading them understanding them giving your critical view whereas your thesis dissertation is your own original research that particular study has not been done there is some unique element to the study and that is your study it is your original research thank you so much ma'am over to you dixna thank you dr sonali for enlightening us with a uh, topic which is very necessary for the post graduate students and uh, in my school uh, they uh, on the walls of our library there was a quote written that when in down, uh, doubt go to the library so i think it holds good for the library dissertation that uh, the students compile a to uh, topic in a vast sense and if in doubt they can consult the topic or their library dissertation and i would also like to uh, thank dr lakshmi balaji ma'am for moderating the session ma Uh, Dr. Sonali, can you stop sharing your screen? And the uh, I am not able to share my screen. Just. I think this is someone else's screen. Um, Bail Murugan sir, are you sharing? Your yeah, screen? yeah, I am sharing the screen. Just, like, just for two minutes, can yeah. you stop sharing the screen? Yeah. Okay. Done. Just a second. She wants to stop us sharing. Yeah, I'm not sharing the screen. It's still showing. No, must be Mams. No, I'm not seeing any screen share here. No, yeah. I'm, uh, must be Mam uh, Sonali, Mam. No? no. No. I've stopped my screen share. Doctor Jigasa, you're not able to uh, share the screen. I'll just, I'll just know. My the. Sonali, ma'am, it's wonderful having you here. It was really an extensive work you have done. Really nice, really, really nice, ma'am. We will be sharing the certificates to you personally. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Balaji, ma'am. Also, it's been very long time since uh, we have seen you, and we would want to see you more uh, in our uh, association. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, I would request Dr. Shikha, ma'am, to Uh, take it over from now. Number two. No, no. Ma'am, you have to unmute. I have unmute. I have yeah. unmute. Yeah. I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Now you are audible. Ma'am, please unmute. Myself, Dr. Shikha Kanodia. I'm associate professor. and uh, pg guide at government and college and hospital ahmedabad uh, first of all i would like to thank iscd head office for giving me this opportunity for being a participant in the mds pg orientation program which is for the first time uh, today's uh, session as in the continuation of the session today's speaker for the topic the final dissertation a path to take is dr val morgan and dr pradeep and it the moderation will be done by two moderators uh, dr rashmi nayar and dr sanjeev kavi dr rashmi nayar she is a professor 
and head of the department at Rungla Dental College and Hospital mm. in Bhilai, uh, Chhattisgarh. She graduated from JKK Natarajan Dental College and Hospital in 2004 and 2009. She did her MBS from Raja Mukha Dental College, Anamale University. She had been the executive committee member in 2016 and then in 2018. She has received the best the Teachers Award in 2018 and has been the scientific chairman of IACD East Con Zone Conference in 2019. Dr. Sanjeev Tiagi, he graduated his dentistry from PMNM Dental College and Hospital Bagalpur and then took the MDS from the same institution in our specialty, conservative dentistry and endodontics. He started teaching from 2001 and joined the Triple Dental Academy in Bhopal in 2004. He has joined as a head of the department and later on become the vice dean and currently he is the dean of the institution. Dr. Tiagi has been actively involved in her professional in his professional organizations as holding the position of vice president at ISCB, vice president of IDA in Bhopal. He has been former EC member of IES, former chairman for the Board of Studies People University, and associate editor for People's Journal of Scientific Journal Research, conference secretary of uh, 16th ISED IES PG convention, which was held in Bhopal in 2016, and also coordinating co secretary in first central zone ISED PG con conference, which was held in Indore in 2018. He has many national and international publications to his credit. He is actively involved in academic activities too. He has received Academician of the Year Award and Best Teachers Award in the year 2019 and 2018 respectively. Over to you, Dr. Rashmi. Good afternoon, one and all. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Dr. Shikha for this kind introduction. I would like to congratulate IACD for coming up with this brilliant program because this helps in help, helps the PGs to understand their requirement and I think also helps in forming a bond with the IACD family. Yesterday's program being a huge success turned out to be an eye opener for the students as well as the faculties. I would also like to thank IACD in having given me this opportunity to moderate the session. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you one of our speakers, Dr. Vail Morgan, professor and head of, of the Cons and Endo Department at Meenakshi Amal Gentle College, Chennai. Dr. Vail Morgan had graduated from Anamala University and completed his post-graduation from GDC Tamil Nadu. Additionally, Sir is also a diplomat of the Indian Board of Academies. With 21 years of teaching experience, Sir has been honored with the Best Teachers Award by the Meenakshi Amal <clears throat> Jenjan College, Best Researcher and Teachers Award by Maher, and Academic Excellence Award in 2016 by IACD. Sir is also the Member Secretary at the Institutional Review Board at Meenakshi College and Board Member of the Anamala University and Sri Ramchandra Dental College, Chennai. On the behalf of IACD, we welcome you, sir. Over to you, Dr. Tyagi. Tyagi, uh, sir. Good afternoon. good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shikha, for uh, having inviting me and introducing me as a moderator. First, I would like to thank uh, uh, our head office, uh, President Dr. Uh, Chandrasekhar, and uh, Honorable uh, Secretary Dr. Mohan and President-elect for Dr. Vibha Hegde for uh, conducting first of its kind a PG orientation program. Now I'm here to introduce uh, Dr. A.R. Uh, Pradeep Kumar. Dr. A.R. Pradeep Kumar is a uh, professor and head and currently working in Thai Mogambikai Dental College and Hospital. Sir did MDS from the uh, Tamil Nadu uh, Government Dental College and BDS from Annamalai University. Sir has also did FDS RCS ED from the Royal College of Surgeons Ed Edinburgh. Sir is also diplomat Indian Board of Endodontics and Sir has many publication, research publication on his name in national and the international journals. With this, 
I would like to invite our both the speakers, Dr. Vela Morgan and Dr. Pradeep. Over to you, sir. Uh, you are able to see my full screen? Yes, sir. We are uh, am yes, I sir. audible? Am yes, I audible? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, very good morning to uh, one and all. At the outset, I would like to thank um, ISEDE and the organizers of this meet for uh, giving us an opportunity to speak in this forum. Just uh, give me a second. Yeah, oh, sorry for the interruption. Um, we begin again. Uh, what is research? It's a quest for knowledge through diligent search or investigation or experimentation aimed at discovery or interpretation of new knowledge. But uh, before we go and look into uh, what, are, uh, what is the research methodology, we'll just have a look at uh, uh, articles which are published from India in uh, Journal of Endodontics, the prestigious Journal of Endodontics. You can look uh, Sanjay Tivaresa's team, a uh, couple of articles, then uh, Vivek Agarwal and his team. And these are two names who often publish uh, uh, in the Journal of Endodontics. This is uh, the ones which are published uh, in the last few years. But if you're thinking these are all uh, the ones which are already published, take a look at uh, the online early articles which are available. You have from Ames, uh, uh, Ajay Logani and his team, and then now, uh, uh, one by uh, Pradeep himself. This is in Journal of Endodontics. If you think that is uh, enough, just have a look at International Endodontic Journal. Among endodontics, this is the uh, highest impact journal. And there also both of them have got an online early article there. And the last one is, of course, from our uh, uh, department uh, by my own team. But um, these are testimony that uh, your research is of high quality. And uh, for beginners, this should be your ultimate aim, destination, or goal. So a good quality research can get only get published in these high-impact journals. And uh, uh, if you do it properly, you can definitely get one published. Now, just like how we have a building plan, before we, we have a blueprint, we have a plan, uh, before we construct a building, you need to have a plan for your research design. You have to conceptualize the problem. You have to work, uh, review the literature, then formulate the aim and objectives, choose a right methodology, and then execute it. And finally, also do the presentation or publication of your research. Now, a good research should be valid and reliable. How do you explain this? Validity means the inference what you derive from your study. It should be a reflection of true nature of the relationship what you are studying. And reliability means you repeat the experiment, you should be able to get the same results over and again. And uh, you can just take at the bullseye target. So the results will be valid or your uh, target is uh, uh, achieved only when you hit the bullseye then it is valid it's highly valid you move away then the validity decreases similarly for reliability you have to probably consistent the result have to be same over and again so a research can be valid reliable or it can be valid and not reliable or vice versa and then you need to establish a rationale or reason for doing the study this is where uh, most of you will lose a plot. Probably we'll just tend to repeat uh, the research that's of no use. 
so how do you find out uh, the lacune in a particular uh, topic it's easy the best papers always cite the limitations and they also cite areas for future work for example if you are looking at uh, uh, anything on disinfection of the root canal you always know that 100% disinfection of root canal or elimination of microorganisms is not possible similarly if you are going to do some retreatment retrieval of the previous root filling material is also always not 100% possible so these are some areas where you can work on and for you probably uh, dr pradeep will also highlight how to search the databases you need to probably look at all the landmark studies key articles and you choose a recent methodology and have timeline in mind just like uh, um, uh, sonali ma'am uh, explained you have a timeline for your thesis also now currently you, as per dca regulation you are supposed to submit your thesis protocol at the end of 6 months of joining so december 31st you have to submit your topic and if it is a clinical study better start your study early and also you have to complete it 6 months prior to your final exam so that means you have 2 years of time for you to work on your thesis topic so we were talking about landmark study if somebody is going to work on a microbiology endomicrobiology you know this uh, kakahashi et al study in 1965 our you probably have to refer to uh, pnr nair and ruki rekuchi's article on biofilm mediated apical periodontitis these are all landmark studies you can probably search the databases or you can refer to your standard textbook or talk to your guides you will probably uh, know which are the key landmark studies in the area where you are working because they probably analyze the problem in full and they will also give you areas for to work on and briefly all your research studies can be classified into experimental or descriptive or sometimes observational studies your case series and the cross sectional they are all observational in nature most of it and if you want to do some analytical studies then you have to do a case control or cohort study or maybe randomized clinical trials a brief look at the various study designs what is a cross sectional study it is a snapshot of an event just like how you take a picture of a event so you're just studying the disease and the risk factor at one point of time either you can consider the whole population or a sample of the population and the data is collected only once there is no follow up here and basically they are used for prevalence studies distribution of disease disability and uh, immunological conditions they are quick and easy to perform and you can always look at multiple outcomes on exposure and they are good for descriptive studies and also good for generating hypothesis but what is their limitation which came first whether the disease or the exposure it is difficult to establish this and uh, causality cause and effect relationship is also difficult to establish you can't do a hypothesis testing and you cannot measure the incidence of the disease and uh, for example if somebody wants to do a cross sectional survey of uh, sars cov infection among healthcare workers so you will be able to determine only the prevalence of the infection whereas it will be difficult for you to uh, establish a causal relationship or establish the sequence of event what has happened and since there is no follow up so the post covid complications may not be reported at all in such a study now you go on to the next one what is a case control study a case control study is like uh, videographing a uh, probably taking a video of a event just compare uh, use an analogy your uh, cross sectional study is the picture and whereas your case control study is a, a, a video image imaging of a sequence of a event so you will be able to establish the association between a risk factor and disease or you can establish the uh, evaluate the strength and direction of the association 
so here you need subjects with disease and without disease the ones without disease will become the control for example this is um, a result taken up from one of the articles wherein they have uh, done a case control study wherein they have uh, compared patients with chronic periodontitis and heart disease so you can establish the odds here so the odds of a chronic periodontitis patient having heart disease is 2.7 so it is easy for you to do compare the and get gather more information about the disease if you are doing a case control study uh, the advantages it is relatively quick easy to perform less expensive evaluating the disease with long latent periods and you can evaluate the strength and direction of the association it is also possible for you to examine multiple risk factors but the limitations it's inefficient for rare exposures here also you cannot uh, compute the incident rate and the causality and temporal relationship is also difficult to establish in these forms of studies and uh, these studies are prone to selection bias and recall bias now the same study if you want to do a case control study you're going to follow up the patients with the disease for a longer period of time so you can understand more about the characteristics of disease and few of them call these also as longitudinal studies now the other form of study is a cohort study a cohort study or group of people who are possibly going to get the disease or who are vulnerable to the disease but here one difference from the case control study is here you take up individuals who have not developed the disease you're going to follow the uh, patient for quite some period of time so it is possible for you to identify the uh, persons who have newly developed the disease that is incidence rate can be calculated using your cohort studies so it is also appropriate for evaluating the association between risk factor and disease incidence rate predicting prognosis evaluating therapy and uh, or prevention and here instead of odds you can determine the relative risk that is the risk of the exposure and uh, uh, what amount it will cause the disease in the patient so for uh, case control study you can calculate the odds radio ratio whereas for your uh, uh, cohort study you will be able to calculate the relative risk and uh, what are the limitations is expensive because you need a longer period of uh, follow up and it is also prone to bias due to loss to follow up and the results are not available for a very long time and uh, the best possible uh, clinical uh, trial is your randomized trials what you can do because you the, here you have a high degree of control over the subjects and conditions and the subjects are randomly allotted to treatment and control groups it is highly valid and also has got the highest level of evidence ma'am was uh, talking just uh, previously before some time back about the hierarchy of uh, uh, evidence and your randomized clinical trials have the best possible evidence uh, in any trials and uh, they can be used up for prophylactic trials therapeutic trials safety trials and also for assessing the risk factor and uh, all your randomized clinical trials you, you should try to do blinding to avoid a bias the patient can be blinded and uh, the operator or the caregiver also can be blinded so uh, a research is of a high validity if there at least there is double blind and you can go one step further where even the principal investigator is uh, uh, blinded so you can have a triple blinded approach also and uh, most of us uh, usually resort to doing laboratory based studies are they relevant still yes they are relevant still so you have to follow some protocols for handling of the teeth so you go by the occupational safety and health uh, guidelines which is uh, given and usually if you want to publish your work you try to work on some new material or device or some novel technique and choose always choose a recent methodology this is our uh, the first one is our uh, study on root canal morphology from indian population using cbct this was done more than 10 years ago 
so currently if you want to do a study like that it's better for you to choose a micro ct which is much more sensitive and much more in thing currently so choose a recent apt methodology for your study and uh, whenever you are trying to do a in vitro study you try to get it as close as possible to the clinical simulation and in also to improve the internal validity if you are going to have some scores like scm scores which are going to be evaluated always have more than one evaluator and they also need to be blinded to the other person's score and uh, the evaluators also have to be pre calibrated and uh, you also calculate uh, whether the scores what the evaluators have uh, given is matching or not say uh, for example you take a look at this article in iej by shannon patel detection of vertical root fractures in root filled teeth with periapical radiograph and cbct scans they had pre calibrated the evaluators and they had three evaluators one radiologist and two endodontists and they gave the interoperator kappa scores also which was matching if it is closer to one it almost means that all the evaluators are probably giving the same score so in this way you can improve the internal validity of your experiment or research what you are doing and this is one of our study which got published in journal of prosthodontic research on fiber reinforced composite you can see that uh, we have simulated the pdl using a elastomeric material but um, here we had used a uh, uh, um uh, static loading one large load and we found out uh, what was the fracture resistance of such a teeth which was restored but if you take a look at the clinical situation uh, in the oral cavity the adhesive interface undergoes repeated changes in temperature so you can simulate that by thermocycling and also one large load is always not there they always undergo subcritical loads so, so you need to have a if you are planning to work on some bonding or on a composite always better to do thermocycling and also probably do a dynamic loading instead of static loading so in this way you try to match your uh, uh, experiment or the study closer to the clinical situation now going on to sampling and uh, sample size determination sampling is uh, observation of a sample from predefined population of interest and uh, the statistical technique for deciding the required number is sample size determination and why do you want to do a uh, sampling obviously if the population is very large we cannot study all the samples it can be time consuming and costly and may not be feasible at all hence we choose smaller units and which allows for the characteristics to be studied in detail in the least possible time and to get the best result and uh, what are the determinants of sample size the sample has to be true representative of the population we need to have a unbiased selection and of course accuracy and sampling usually you have two methods probability sampling and non probability sampling non probability sampling is not favored because it lacks accuracy so we look into the um, other aspects of this simple random sampling systematic random sampling stratified random sampling and cluster sampling simple random sampling all the members in the population are uh, uh, listed and uh, probably you can uh, pick it up as a draw of lots or you can use the random number tables or probably you can generate random numbers using your computer also till that such time you get the desired sample so here we want four sample from out of a, a sample frame of 20 so you can use a simple random sampling which is the most commonest followed method of sampling and uh, what is systematic random sampling every nth member of the population is selected still you go ahead and get the desired number here we have used uh, every fourth uh, uh, member of the population is selected till we get the desired number what is stratified random sampling supposing we have more details about the sample frame or the population and they are heterogeneous in nature you can sub classify them so here uh, we are uh, four different sets of population and then what we can do is we can do a simple random sampling and 
select the samples from each of these subgroups that becomes a stratified random sampling and uh, how do we determine the sample size it is the mathematical process of deciding before a study begins as to how many subjects should be studied a proper sample size means your study is precise and valid if the sample size is smaller then your study will become underpowered a larger sample size may be a waste of resource and uh, what are the key things probably you can uh, do a sample size estimation through relevant studies previous literature you can do a pilot study and uh, give the results of the pilot study to uh, to your statistician and he will calculate the sample size for you and there are uh, the sample size formula is different for uh, different study designs and uh, also depending upon the type of type of data what is under investigation then uh, the population mean or proportion the confidence level usually it is set at 95% and also the significance level the power of study can be 90% 80% or 70% usually 90% or 80% is uh, preferred and uh, king in all these factors your statistician will be able to give you the uh, correct sample size what is needed and um, lastly i'll uh, be covering up what is a bias bias as per definition where the results of the study is different from truth and it can result in overestimation or underestimation of risk and there are many types of biases according to sacket there are more than 19 types of biases and according to choi it is more than 65 types but in a healthcare profession we are always bothered about selection bias ascertainment or information bias and confounding bias uh, because of lack of time i'll be just be dealing with few of them which are much easy to understand so let's see the first study it's a cross sectional study a survey done amongst endodontists across united states so you have to you just send the survey only to your friends you don't cover all the endodontists then there is a selection bias similarly you going to do to take a look at the second study here which is uh, given an observational clinical study uh, on the sars cov infection if patients are picked up only from the hospital then it is a healthcare access bias because you cannot generalize the results to the population as a and what is information bias it is the error in measurement or misclassification of subjects and this bias is introduced by the observer or the interviewer and sometimes by the patient also and lastly what is confounding bias it is a third factor a third factor which may distort the association between two variables that is the exposure and disease what you are studying is called as a confounding bias and this also overestimates or underestimates the true association so if you have a factor b which you are trying to risk factor b which you are trying to find out whether it is associated with a particular disease but there is another factor x which is associated with both the disease and the factor b then that's called as a confounder so this is our one of our trials which got published in uh, iij recently so we are trying to check for uh, three uh, painkillers their effect on post operative pain so we have done uh, the group analysis intergroup analysis but uh, using cruskal valis but in addition to that we done a regression analysis so here age the gender male or female the tooth type these also could influence the result but in our study we found that they are not uh, uh, influencing the result so how are you going to control the confounding bias by randomization by restricting to particular age group maybe you can choose uh, 20 uh, people between 20 to 40 years of age group so then but the problem is the result can be applied only to that particular specific age group and not generally to all the population i think you should be reading up in the papers about the uh, uh, covid vaccine one of the companies have tested it uh, only in younger individuals and now now they are claiming that it will work even with the uh, people above age of 60 and we know that the people above age of 60 are only vulnerable to your uh, sars covid infection so uh, 
this is a problem if you're going to restrict the age group then you have matching select controls you can stratify the population and choose uh, members from each of this sub population and of course finally you can do a regression analysis to find out whether some of these factors will influence the result and uh, if you plan ahead uh, your research will have a clear path and um, the rest of the topic will be covered by dr pradeep but i would like to end uh, um, uh, citing this article this is the number of uh, articles published between 2010 and 2015 in end leading endodontic journals and you find india is ranked uh, ninth and uh, i'm sure we can move higher up in the ranking with bright and young minds like um, uh, the bunding um, endodontists or uh, the specialists who have joined uh, our specialty it's all in your hands uh, to get the ranking higher up thank you Oggi ci sono qua. Good night. Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. So I will be continuing this lecture, and my topic is the review of literature. The first topic is review of literature. Sorry, just a second. What is the purpose? To identify what research has been done, to identify a topic that requires further research, to recognize the main methods and techniques that have been used in the past, to highlight gaps in the current literature, and to offer an alternative perspective. So we have to identify a field which needs to be experimented more, collect research in that topic, and then formulate a good research question. Let's have an example, lab research topic, root canal dentin erosion. This is a topic. So first let's search for this in PubMed and also in Google Scholar. Also we can search in the leading endodontic journals. Based on this, we get a collection of articles. Let's have a look at the first one. It's a review. So somebody has already reviewed this topic so we can see what is there. Then we can also see the other articles which are experiments. Let's see one of them. So before that, what is erosion? The first picture shows dentin covered by a smear layer. The bottom two pictures show removal of smear layer and exposed tubules. This is erosion. So first we found out what is erosion. Now let's see this experiment. Yeah. Here they have <laughs> different sequences yeah. of hypochlorite and EDT and check whether erosion happens. And they have concluded that hypochlorite followed by EDTA causes minimal erosion, while EDTA followed by hypochlorite can cause more erosion. Let's get back to the methods. Has the methods been presented in a logical, clear, meaningful manner? And is it replicable by us with our facilities? If so, we can evaluate these methods and use them as a template to formulate a new study design in case we are interested in this particular topic. Another lab study, whether the ferrule is more important or a fiber post is more important while restoring redontly treated incisors. These authors have concluded that the ferrule is more important. This is another example of a 
lab study. Again, we can check the methods and do a similar study if we are interested. In vitro studies checklist. If we are doing an in vitro study, we have to follow this checklist which has been previously studied. So please look at these papers. Next, let's go to observational studies. Example, in vivo strain alterations in mandibular molars after root canal treatment procedures. Here, the authors have attached a strain gauge onto the buccal aspect of a mandibular molar and evaluated the strain during and after root canal treatment. They have reported that coronal strain is high after access cavity preparation and reduces after the composite core restoration. So this gives us an idea for how to evaluate strain intraorally. And these studies have to follow the strobe guidelines and the more recent probe guidelines, which was published in 2020. Next, clinical trials. These are much more difficult to do. Example, different constant tests of hypochlorite on the outcome of primary root canal treatment, a randomized control trial. What have they done? They have assessed 147 patients, excluded 47, randomized 100 into the HC and LC group. HC means high concentration. LC is the low concentration. And then check them after a week for pain and after a year for success or failure. So this is how we do a randomized controlled clinical trial. Another example, different liners on pulpal outcome after partial caries removal. Again, they'll check the patients after about a year. This is how we do a randomized controlled trial. Clinical trials will have to follow the CONSOR 2010 statement and have to be registered in the Clinical Trials Registry of India before we start the trial. They do not accept registration after the trial has started. So please register them before we start the trial. Again, the latest guidelines are the private guidelines published in the International Aeronautic Journal in 2020. So please follow these guidelines when you're doing these studies. So these are some examples of methods that we can do. There are many other examples. So please read the literature and come to a conclusion. Take home. So decide on a topic, review literature, evaluate the methods, check feasibility of the methods, whether we can do it or not, and then formulate a study. Of course, sometimes you have to review the literature and then decide on a topic. It may not always be possible to decide a topic and then review the literature. Next, let's come to control groups. This is also a part of the methods. What is a control group? A group which receives no treatment, a placebo or a standard treatment in order to benchmark ourselves against the treatment under study. Both the treatment group and the control group are parallel experiments that follow the exact same procedures on similar populations or similar samples. Let's have an example. So randomized placebo controlled trial of NSAID drugs. So many patients were selected. They were given different NSAIDs while one group received a gelatinous capsule with no medications. So this is the placebo group. So we can check each medication against other medication. Also check all the medications against the placebo group. Another example, fluoride varnish. One group receives fluoride varnish. Another group receives a sham application. That is, we only use an applicator on the blood tube with no varnish on it. So this is checking the effect of fluoride and with no fluoride. Next, active control. So here we're checking a test treatment versus a standardized treatment. So we check whether the test treatment is as good or better than the standardized treatment. Example, here we have comparison of two endodontic irrigation protocols, the NAI protocol and the PUI protocol, needle assisted irrigation protocol or the passive ultrasonic irrigation protocol and check whether both are the same or one is better. Positive and negative controls. A positive control group is a treatment that is known to work. But a negative control group is a treatment that is known not to work. Let's have an example. Yeah, the effect of 8.25% hypochlorite on dentin pulp dissolution and dentin strength and modulus. So negative control group, the pulp and dentin bars were immersed in saline, which is not to, known to have any effect on pulp and dentin. Well, the positive control group is 8.25% hypochlorite. In between, we'll have various concentrations of hypochlorite and we check which is the optimal group. This is an example of positive and negative control groups. Take home. Control groups are important to evaluate the experimental protocol. So we have the placebo or no treatment groups. Also, we can check the test treatment versus a standardized treatment. Next, let me talk something about biostatistics. Usually, we give this work up to a statistician, but it's better we know something about biostatistics. What is statistics? 
study of methods and procedures for collection, classification, analysis, and the interpretation of data to make scientific interferences. Statistical terms. Let's have a few terms. Mean. Mean means the average. Median is the middle value. When we arrange the values in ascending or descending order, the middle one is called as the mean. Median, sorry. Mode. Mode is the most commonly occurring value. Standard deviation. Amount of variation or dispersion of a set of values. Usually when you have a mean value, the standard deviation should indicate that the values are slightly distributed around the mean value. If they are broadly distributed from the average, that reduces the reliability of our values. So you must have a mean value and a small standard deviation showing slight distribution of values around the mean. This is the formula for standard deviation. However, we will take the help of a statistician to evaluate the standard deviation of our research. Before starting the study, it is essential to have a statement called as the null hypothesis. And then we do the experiment and see whether the experiment proves or disproves this null hypothesis. In this experiment, the null hypothesis would be that there is no difference between the effect of two different concentrations of hypochlorite on the healing and pain after primary antibiotic treatment. So the experiment either proves the statement or if it is disproved, we have what is called as the alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference on the effect of two different concentrations of hypochlorite on healing and post-op pain after primary anodotic treatment. So the experiment either proves or disproves the pre-existing null hypothesis. Power of the experiment. Higher the power, better the probability of rejecting a false null hypothesis. It increases with higher sample size. So the higher the sample size, better the experiment and better our chances of proving or disproving the null hypothesis. In this experiment, they have a power of about 90%, which is quite high. Types of data. We have quantitative data and qualitative data. Quantitative data can be continuous, that is 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, etc. When discrete data is only whole numbers, only 1, 2, 3, like that. Qualitative data. Qualitative data can be nominal or ordinal. Nominal means it's got a label, male, female, vital, non-vital, like that. Ordinal is based on a scale, good to bad, like one to five, one is good, bad is five, one, two, three, four, five, that is ordinal data. After data collection, we do some tests to evaluate the existing hypothesis by comparing means and by comparing proportions. This is a distribution of values. So we have initially low value, then a peak, then a descending order. So like corona testing. So initially we have a low cases, then we have a peak, then the cases sort of come down. This is a normal distribution of data. This may not always happen. So we can have normally distributed data or non-normal distribution of data. So based on whether our data is normally distributed or not normally distributed, we do different tests to come to a conclusion. This is another table showing the different tests based on whether the data is normal or non-normal. However, all this will be better done by the statistician. It's better you just know the data is two types, normal data and non-normal data. After the test, we get what is called as a p-value. The p-value is less than 0.05, means that the results are statistically significant. The p-value is greater than 0.05, means that the results are not significant. For example, in this experiment, greater healing was observed in the high concentration group, but the difference was not statistically significant. That means according to this experiment, there is no much difference between the healing and pain after using two different concentrations of sodium hypochlorite. Take home message, collect the data, analyze the data, evaluate the hypothesis, and finally reach a conclusion. Let's start with them last part of my lecture, which is how to write a thesis. What is a thesis? A long essay or dissertation involving personal research written by a candidate for the purposes of a university degree. It's better you do it out of interest rather than for the purpose of a university degree. So what are the parts? Introduction. What did you do and why? Review of literature, which is a collection of articles. Methods. How was it done? Results. What was found? Discussion, what do your results mean and why? Conclusions, what new knowledge was gained from this experiment? Let's see whether we have added something to science by our research or not. Begin to write, write with the reader in mind. So the person who reads it finds it easy to read. 
this is the title page. Usually we start with the title page, contains title, degree, name of the university, logo, etc. This varies from college to college. Then we have a certificate from the HOD, from the principal. Then we have acknowledgements. We thank the guides, supervisors, statisticians, and others who have helped us in this period. Then we have ethical clearance certificate from the university. Then we have informed consent model wherever applicable. We have to place this also in the thesis. Then we have a table of contents, introduction, aims, etc. Let's see them one by one. Introduction. We have to state the background of the study that is the available research on this particular topic. Then we state the need for our study. What is the gap in knowledge that this study is addressing? And then we state our hypothesis, which will be proved or not at the end of the study. Aims and objectives. Aims are broad statements of intent. Objectives are much more specific and will have to be answered at the end of the study. Review of literature. Usually we add about 40 to 50 articles in this or a similar format to show that we have gone through all the papers in this topic before starting the study. Methods. The beginning, end dates of the study, the number of subjects, patients, samples, animals enrolled in the study, the inclusion, exclusion criteria will all have to be mentioned. Also, a detailed description of the experimental protocol, a flow chart, figures and legend, and finally, the statistical methods will have to be included in the methods. This is a sample of a flow chart and a methodology to be added in the thesis book. Results, please present them in a clear and concise manner. In tables, graphs can also be added. Discussion should answer these following points. How do our findings compare with previous studies, whether they agree or disagree with previous studies? Interpretation of results in terms of the background laid out in the introduction. Evidences supporting each interpretation of the study and significance of the present results. Basically, we discuss our methodology and we discuss our results in the discussion. And then we come to the conclusion. We present only the most important findings, not everything that we find. Then bibliography. Each sentence written in the methods, introduction, and discussion should be backed up with a reference. References can be in two styles, Vancouver or Harvard. These are the most common reference styles used. Then the take home. There are various parts to a thesis, and it may vary from different colleges. Please consult your guide for this. A recap. Define the research problem review the literature, formulate a hypothesis, design the research methodology, collect data, analyze the data, finally interpret and report. Research is a journey from known to unknown. The real voyage consists not in always seeking new things, but also in seeing the same landscape or same experiment with new eyes. <coughs> Thanks, Dr. Vita Amri and Dr. Kesaran for biostatistics. Thanks, Dr. Archana, Saranya, Tejasri, and Sandhya for their support. Thank you all for your patience. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vail Murugan and Dr. Pradeep for conducting an extensive and informative lecture on the importance of thesis, the different methodologies, statistics, how to write the thesis. I think the PG should not be taking this for granted now. Thank you so much, sir. Questions, Dr. Tyagi, sir? Uh, Dr. Shikha, do we have, uh, still do we have time for question and answer? Or I think we are running short of time. Yes, sir, we are running really short of time. Uh, so, should we... Uh, uh, can we share uh, the uh, yes, email ID of Dr. Uh, Veru Morgan and Dr. Uh, Pradeep, so the uh, audience can ask directly the question sir. from them? do that yeah okay dr shika please go ahead with the uh, yeah. certificate presentation yeah yeah uh, thank you dr valmurgan as well as dr uh, pradeep sir it was a very nice uh, informative lecture on dissertation making because the day the students enter in the college for mbs their worries are about the most worries is about the dissertation only and it was very well explained to them how to proceed thank you sir uh, now it's time for the certificate of appreciation. I would like to share the screen. So, uh, please accept Dr. Pradeep sir, the certificate of appreciation. I think the screen is shared. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, yeah, please sir. Uh,
Deep sir, I have shared the certificate. Then uh, Dr. Velmurgan, sir, please accept the certificate of honor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I would also like to thank the moderators, Dr. Rashmi Nair, please accept the certificate of honor. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Then Dr. Sanjeev Tiagi, yeah, Dr. Sanjeev Tiagi for nice moderation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so Over much. Over to head office. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep, Dr. Vail Murugan. Thanks, Thank man. you. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> Pleasure is, is exactly mine. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's really wonderful. And I know how meticulous you both are in doing uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, so it's been a proud privilege for me to host you. And, uh, and it's, it's good that the students had uh, learned it from the masters. Thank you so much, sirs. Uh, I would now ask Dr. Abhishek Laga to continue. Thank you, Dr. Mohan Kumar. A very good afternoon uh, to all and a warm, warm welcome to all new 2020 new postgraduates of conservative dentistry. The next session, my Dr. Mitra Hegre, ma'am, on publication and presentation. So I would like to introduce Dr. Kavita Sanjeev, the moderator of that session. And Dr. Kavita Sanjeev is a professor and PhD guide in Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics at SRM Dental College, Chennai. She graduated her BTS from Raja Mutaya Dental College, Annamalai University, and completed her master's in Savita, from Dent Savita Dental College. She was conferred the best outgoing postgraduate student award in 1999 by Savita Dental College. She has been an invited guest speaker in many scientific forms, forums, and has authored a few chapters in the next text in the textbook titled Materials in Dentistry. She has many publications in national and international index journals and a reviewer, reviewer in reputed journals. So I like to uh, request Kavita Ma'am to take over the session. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abhishek. Uh, it was uh, kind of you. And uh, I, on this, uh, at this juncture, I just thank the uh, IACD team again for giving me this opportunity. I must uh, address that the postgraduates are given a platter of actually what they want to know and what they should do by, I think, uh, one of all the best uh, renowned speakers of our fraternity. Uh, I think they should be very thankful for this commendable uh, initiative by this, uh, by this IACD. Well, to move on to the session, it is uh, one other well-known eminent uh, speaker, Dr. Mitra Hegde. I was very uh, inspired by her uh, CV uh, when I was just going through it. So here is her journey again. So Dr. Mitra, uh, is currently serving as Vice Principal and Head of Department, Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Abhishetty Memorial Institute of Dental Science. She graduated in 1989 with DMA Pi and Colgate Gold Medals and has been teacher and researcher since 1992 with 375 research uh, articles in international and uh, national journals. And recently, a publication in nature.com in British Dental Journal. She is a recognized PhD guide with five candidates, awarded PhD and six registered candidates. She has completed four major research products, projects of BRNS, ICMR, and BGST, one ongoing project of Dabur India Limited and guided nine ICMR grants, STS projects in 10, last 10 years. She's a recipient of highest civilian award in the field of medicine, Karnataka uh, Rajyotsava Award in 2011, Dentist Excellence Award 2013, instituted by Indian Dentist Research and Review, Dr. J.G. Kanapan Award by the International Association of Dental Research and I Indian Society of Dental Research, Women Dentist Achiever Award uh, by uh, IDA and Women Dental Council, Academic Excellence Award in 2016, and Prestigious Outstanding Achievement Award in 18 by IACD, Scientific Reviewer Award by uh, Best Scientific Reviewer by 
Contemporary Clinical Dentistry Editorial Board in 2018. She has been recognized as member of Academy of Medical Sciences India for her exemplary contribution in the field of science. She was a syndicate member, member of Center for Advanced Studies in Mangalore University, member of Board of Studies for Undergraduates and Postgraduates, PhD Registration Committee, and External Export, uh, Expert Research Committee, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Science. She is the past president of Indian Dental Association, Dakshina Kannada branch, vice president of Indian Endodontic Society and Indian Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. Presently, she's serving as Secretary of Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics of Karnataka and Editorial Board Member of 16 Index Journal. It was a pleasure introducing you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kavita, Thank you. for the introduction. And uh, today, uh, before I start, I thank the President and Secretary and the Executive Committee members of IACD for giving us this opportunity to share our knowledge with all the new admissions to our family members. So I begin congratulating all the first year PGs joining the family of Indian Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. And remember, you have joined a family which was called as operative dentistry earlier, but it is one of the speciality which makes a mark. The topic that has been given to me is how to make your presence felt through publication and presentation. I know the youngsters know how to make their presence felt better than me because they know they have the medias, the Instagrams, the Facebook, but this is a different kind of way in which you have to make your presence felt through scientific metrics, which I would like to give you a brief in this another 25 minutes. What are the metrics that is available, which you can, which will be introduced to you and you can go through it online in detail. In this presentation, your learning objectives will be how to make your presence felt. How does anybody make you feel important when you are a good student or a good clinician and a good academician? All of us want to become good students, good academicians and good clinicians. But how, how do we achieve it? There is, earlier we were called as hardworking, but the present day since it is smart working. No, because earlier it is we had to work, work, work and learn with experience. But now you had had a platform in the last two days where you could get the experience of all the teachers, students, good uh, academicians and good clinicians. The benefit of presentation at conferences is a second part of the lecture, which includes paper presentation, poster presentations and table clinics and why you need to do this will be covered in this lecture. The third objective is measures of scientific output of research entity, that is H index, which quantifies impact. So what is H index? It is the H index which makes your presence. So in this presentation, I will tell you what is an H index. And then we will talk about the different databases we, all of us know whenever we want to know something, we get into Google and the Google is a database which all of us are familiar with. But as you enter into a dentistry as a specialty, from Google Scholar, we go into other databases called as Science Direct, EBSCO, Scopus, Web of Science and PubMed. I will tell you in this presentation, what is PubMed, what is Web of Science, what is Scopus and EBSCO. EBSCO or is most commonly used whenever it is elite medical sciences. But in medical science and in life science, we have PubMed, Web of Science and Scopus. Yeah. Learning objectives. The fifth learning objective is what is research? I think this has been told continuously. Whenever we do something very systematically, 
when what is research we are there are two ways in which we can do research one is searching what is already existing also becomes research or we can find out something new then it becomes research leading to innovation or every patient can become your research topic where we can do something best for him and something an alter treatment plan which would make him more comfortable so anything which is done very systematically and where you collect the data required as per norms when you document it very well you had a lecture from mamta kaushik who told you very well how to do documentation of critical information and then you do the analysis dr pradeep and dr vel murugan covered very clearly how do you do analysis and then when you interpret the data that becomes research and this research can get into as publication or presentation and the next topic is citation so what is citation citation is to identify researchers or publications and how often they are been referred by others so how popular are you is known by how many citations you have so how do you do see uh, we all belong to an era when we did not know about all these things when we joined pg we just joined we did our work we did publications for 10 to 20 years without knowing all these basics but the present generation you are lucky that you know all this so you can start the reverse learning you know where you want to reach and so you have an aim and objective so you can get to that area much faster have higher h index and citations so what are the major citations or indexings we always say get into the journal which is indexed so what are the major citation or indexing uh, sites as one is science citation index and it is the new one which is called as science citation index expanded which is a part of thomson reuters and the electronic version of which is called as web of science and web of science is a one where we need to have a membership and once we have a membership we get an authority to get into a database called as web of science it is not like google scholar where it is freely available we need to have a membership or all, all students can be have become members of web of science and get access into thomson reuters electronic version the next is the scopus the scopus is a database of the elsevier and this database is a one which gives us the other uh, matrices there are four main matrices which gives a, uh, which, uh, which will be covered in detail we have other citation indexes also which is called as cite square by the indian citation index and google scholar citation so it is four major citations that we have to know of one is a science citation index by web of science the scopus citation index by elsevier and then we have the size site square and then the google scholar coming to the presentation that was the entire presentation learning objectives coming to recognition of an individual how does an individual get recognized as an academician a researcher or a good clinician through his metrics and what are the metrics these databases looking to that is as i already told you the citations from the science citation index expanded from web of science or from scopus in scopus we have the journal ranking we have the paper ranking we have the impact factor of the journal and we have the h index of the individual so the scope in web of science we have only the science citation index whereas in scopus there are four different types of identification how you get identified SJR is a Schemago journal rank. It gives a ranking for the journal depending upon the impact factor. And SNIP, a source normalized impact per paper, says how many times that paper has been cited. And the impact factor of the journal and H index. We will go in detail for each of it. What is citation? It has already been told about uh, by the um, uh, resource persons earlier. that you take an article and then you read the article and then you refer it as a reference in your thesis and then you publish it and somebody else takes your article 
and then they cite you and then they publish it. So the citing articles is identified as a source and the cited article is identified as a reference. So for citation index, so the more the number of times somebody cites you, so your citation index goes on increasing. Normally, if you see the international uh, uh, academicians, they have a, a small area of research. For the first 15 years of my teaching and learning, I used to do research in different fields until after 20 years, I did my PhD. And then I realized that we need to get into a smaller area of research and do more concentrated work where I first started with saliva research, saliva as a biomarker. So now if you see citations in saliva as a biomarker, the citation index goes on increasing. And, and it is very nice to see that every day we find Google Scholar tells you how many people have cited you. Coming to citation index, science citation index, it is a citation index originally produced by the Institute of Scientific Information and created by Eugene Garfield in 1964. The largest vers version of science citation index expanded, and I already told you it is a Thomson Reuter electronic version is called as Web of Science. And Web of Science is the largest database available in the world. And the Web of Science has a large number of databases, which you see in the picture. But for medical research and dental research, we use the Medline and the Biological Abstracts, which is quite commonly is a database which we normally cite. In Scopus, the citation index is called the, it has got four quality measures. I told you it is basically from Elsevier. It has four measures, quality measures. One is H index. H index identifies an individual, the H index of an individual, site score of an individual, whereas SJR is a Schemago journal rank. It is a ranking of a journal and SNIP is a source normalized impact per paper. So these are the ranks which help to identify the articles. Schemago journal ranking. The SJR indicator is a measure of the scientific influence of scholarly journals that accounts for both the number of citations received by a journal and the importance or a prestige of the journals where the citations come from. Remember, whenever we send an article for publications in journal Q1 or Q2 journals, they always specify the re, re, your bibliography and your references should be from this database. The reason is they also want to improve their ranking. So how do they improve their ranking? When a person with a higher H index publishes in their journal, there is a more chances that they will be cited and their citation index and the ranking improves. So Schemago journal rank is one of the internationally recognized standards for identifying the quantile of a journal. What does it mean? So it gives the numeric value indicating the average number of weighted citations received during a selected year per document published in that journal during the previous three years. So they evaluate the journals every three years and they give a ranking as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So Q1, the Scopus, the best to the top 25 go into the Q1 rank and the next is Q2, Q3, and Q4. So these quartile ranks, the journals from the highest to the lowest based on their impact factor or the impact index. Every one of us, want to publish in Q1 journals. The desire to do to Q1 journals, you can step from Q3, Q, Q4, Q2 to Q1, or directly you can go to Q1. How do you do this? If you have listened to all the lectures given to by previously, how to start a research, how to make a research question, how to do the hypothesis, and if you understand it very well, then you can directly go to Q1. Q1 would take an article which has got an elliptical pitch. The title of which is has an elliptical pitch means if you something has already been done, 
he will not accept that article. If something has been done and it is done in a different way, he will not accept that article. Something which would give impact to his journal and that, that something new, something new or innovative would be accepted immediately. So these are the things which you have to understand when we plan your thesis or when you plan for your articles or your systematic reviews. Coming to citation index, Indian citation index is the third citation index. The first one was Web of Science, second was Scopus, and the third one is the Indian citation index. First automated citation indexing done by Sitesphere in 1997 and was patented. And the fourth one, fourth citation is a Google Scholar citation. Google Scholar citation provides a simple way for authors to keep the track of citation to their articles. Google Scholar added a new option where it gives a service to compute the citation metrics to track them over. So I request all the postgraduate students, you make a Google Scholar account and add the citation, ask them to add on to your citation. So every time you publish and everybody, anybody cites you, it will inform you, start with Google Scholar, then go to Indian Citation Index and then become member of Scopus and Web of Science. Coming to impact factor of the journal. The impact factor of a journal or an academic journal is a science metric index that reflects the yearly average number of citations that articles published in the last two years in a given journal received. Example, if my article has an impact of seven, that means that work has been cited seven times in seven different articles, seven times in seven different journals. The measure of frequency with which the average article in a journal has been cited in a particular year becomes the impact factor of the journal. So the impact factor of most of the journals ranges between 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 3 to 4, and above. We have our caries research, which is 1 to 2, and then we have, uh, so most of the journals in dentistry are restricted between 1 to 4. But when we get into material research or when you go into biomedical or health science research, you find journals which is above five. Coming to H index, the H index is an author level metric that measures both the productivity and the citation impact of the publication of a scientist or a scholar. I told you it is an author metric. So if somebody has cited you, in the number of journals, the number of times becomes your H index. So if 10 times somebody has cited you in 10 journals, then your H index becomes 10. So H index is a metric for evaluating the cumulative impact of an author's scholarly output and performance. It measures quantity with quality by comparing publications to citations. H stands for Hirsch's index as it was proposed by J. Hirsch in 2005. So if you see scientific score and statistics, this is Dr. Mitra Enigde, that is myself. The reason is whenever we apply for grants or we apply for fellowships or we apply for external funding or collaborative research, the first thing they ask us is for the statistics, scores and statistics. These are the marks which keep updating as somebody cites us. So if you see a citation, if you see Google Scholar citations, we have huge citations, which is about 1,673. But that means earlier we used to publish in journals which were not in Scopus, Web of Science, or PubMed. But if you see when Web of Science, so the criteria is the citation, the ETH index, the ITIN index, and the publications. So number of publications, the ITIN index, ETH index, and citations becomes the metrics in Scopus, Web of Science, Google Scholar, and one more database is a research gate. A research gate is a place where you can exchange your articles, you can exchange your work, you can find collaborative research area. So I also advise all the students to become research gate members. So these are the four areas, Google Scholar Citation, Research Gate, Web of Science, and Scopus is where all of y'all can become members free of cost and have your IDs logged on into it. 
coming to uh, we always say publication in peer reviewed journals earlier we did not know what is peer reviewed journals but in 1999 first we had the copernicus indexing which was first established as a, as a peer reviewed standard and later the scopus elsevier abstract in 2004 and then the web of science in 1997 we already spoke about web of science we spoke about copernicus scopus and web of science these are the different databases scopus is a different web database web of science is a different base now we come to the next that is pubmed a journal of conservative dentistry is in pubmed is in web of science and is in scopus so pubmed what is pubmed pubmed is a free search engine accessing primarily the medline database of references and abstracts on life science and biomedical topics so whenever in dentistry or in life science most of the search is restricted to pubmed the united states library national library of medicine and the national institute of health maintain the database as a part of the system for information retrieval in pubmed we have two one is a medline in pubmed when in pubmed we only have the titles and the abstracts but if you want to go in for the medline in the medline search if you do a medline search we have to put what is called as the mesh terms or the medical subject headings when you start searching for medline or the mesh terms you can get the articles from the medline database and if you want the entire article then you have to go to pubmed central for search so the entire article is in pubmed central and it also has another part of it which is called as a bookshelf where the books are also indexed in pubmed so a pubmed is divided into medline that is a database and the pubmed central has got the entire articles and the bookshelf is having the books so now whenever you say you want to search for a topic instead now i am doing something in saliva research or if i am doing something on bonding my mesh term is very important because when i put do a search i do a search with a mesh term bonding composites nano composites so if that becomes my mesh term so imagine if i want to be cited more then i need to use the medical subject headings or the mesh terms in my article writing also so coming to what is mesh the medical subject heading is used for indexing cataloging and searching of biomedical and health related information now tell me what is important here what you should remember here you all know what you want to do as a research what you want to do as theses you always remember dentistry is a huge ocean which you cannot conquer within 3 years in 30 years i'm still studying and i'm still learning so but there is a small area in dentistry which you have to master and that could be in a form of your thesis and it could be in a form of your ld they already spoke to you how to go ahead with your thesis and it could be your ld or your dissertation in a form of a systematic review or it could be a meta analysis which helps you which is related to your thesis or you could do some cases and which is related to your thesis so you should remember there should be some terminologies or the medical subject headings which you should be an expert in in your master of dentistry on one topic you should know in and out of one topic a small area and that topic should be a area of your research and future research if you have to do your phd or future you want to do your um, publishing in the same area then you get higher and higher citations mesh is a us library of medicine and lm is controlled by vocabulary of terms used to organize the medline database it is also used for search in pubmed and some other databases like ebsco or in cochrane library sinhal or ebsco is the same but this is used most for nursing sciences or paramedical sciences cochrane library and pubmed is the most commonly used for our medical subject headings search so remember these mesh terms should be very important these mesh terms or we also call it as keywords should be used whenever you want to do some research and this should be used in your abstract repeatedly used in your abstract repeatedly used in your 
um, introduction repeatedly used in your materials and methods and has to be used in your conclusion. So if the mesh term is coined, coined and if you repeatedly use it, then there is more chances that you get into a uh, higher and higher journal that is Q1, Q2 journals. Coming to what are the different databases, the different databases are the other databases also we have like Science Direct and uh, we already spoke about Google, PubMed, Scopus, Web of Science. There are multiple number of databases for which we can access if required. And coming to what is the options of uh, writing a paper. It's already been told to you all in details. You can make a review or you can make an in vitro study. In vitro means when you're doing are not in patients, but on the uh, tab table, um, non-clinical studies are called as in vitro studies, or it could be an epidemiological survey. Uh, Dr. Pradeep explained to us about what are the different types of surveys, case reports, or it could be an in vivo study. And this is very well explained about the different type of uh, reviews, systematic review and Cochrane review. I think uh, uh, Sonali uh, Taneja has given a, review, a very detailed explanation of this. What is the difference? I always advise in case you take a research topic, a research topic of your what you want to do, make a systematic review of that topic, if possible, even a meta-analysis, then only you will understand what is your aim, objective, methodology, what are what has been done so far, and what you have to do further. When you do a systematic review, you come to know what has been done by others so far, and what different you have to do, and how you can do it. What were the errors in the studies which were done earlier, and how you can avoid those errors in your study and make it more systematic. So this year, uh, with the COVID coming in, I think uh, we had made a modification in our uh, teaching and learning program that they did their LD first, that is a systematic review as soon as they entered the first year. And after which I gave them the uh, thesis topics and the thesis topics, they could do their uh, protocol designing by themselves because they knew what, how and where. Coming to systematic review, this has already been covered. Very important, you need to have a research question. You need to have an inclusion, exclusion criteria, search strategy, abstract, and pool of information, which is very clearly already described to you. So coming back to research again, so whenever anything you do, whether it is a patient job, or whether it is a chair side research, or whether it is a bench research, or whether it is an in vivo research, or whether it is a a systematic review, anything which is done very systematically, which is a collection of data documented with critical information, interpretation of data, and to follow the suitable methodology and by specific professional fields and academic disciplines. And these are the titles which every research should have, the title, abstract, introduction, methods, discussion, reference, and the funding. So the research cycle, the cycle of research is create a question and do the work. And again, you can go higher in the next level of doing the research. You come out with an answer and then you realize you can do one step higher and go, go, go to do much better next time. Whenever we want to do research earlier, we never had any reporting guidelines. So we had to make our own guidelines and report it. But remember, whatever research you are doing, uh, thesis, whatever is your thesis topic, which was very clearly told by the presenters just before me, Pradeep and Dale Murugan gave a very details of what are the topics you can select. And if you select a randomized control trial, then you have to go for concert guidelines. You just Google concert guidelines, entire guidelines come to you. If you're doing an observational study, go for Strobe's guideline. If you're doing a systematic review, go for Prisma guidelines. So whatever you're doing, whether it, if you want to present a case report, go for care guidelines. If you want a qualitative research, so you just type out what is the type of study you're doing and ask for guidelines. The guidelines is there in the Google and then you download the guidelines and follow it systematically. So if you have a case report, I think Mamata Kaushik gave us a very detailed report of what can be case report. 
anything which has a, follows a standard operating protocol does not become a case report if you do a curved canal management does not become a case report something which you have done as a modified or an altered treatment option only can come as case report or with the long term follow up pre operative and post operative documentation which can be radiographic clinical and with the all the uh, guidelines required for a case report we have the care guidelines so any guidelines when you look at it they will give you a checklist of what all you should have and once you follow those check, uh, guidelines and you check the checklist and if you have all that then you can make it into a case report very easily coming to the second part of the presentation that is the presentation skills to communicate effectively in a workplace you need to be able to present your information very clearly as doctors we only don't teach to a room full of class but we also become teachers to our patients every patient becomes your student before after you do your diagnosis and treatment planning you need to explain to the patient what his problem is what you want to do for him what you plan to do for him what are the different options of treatment available and what would be the outcome and what would be the expected outcome and what would be the shortcomings so these uh, presentations to patient and presentation in the seminars presentation in conferences is sir not knowing how to put a set of powerpoint slides together it means engaging and connecting with the audience to get the message across the audience could be your teachers the audience could be your colleagues your audience could be your patient or it could be your peers the most important thing that we have to remember is the time limit the body language the credit and the references the ways to improve your presentation skill is to practice transform nervous energy into enthusiasm arrive early adjust to your surroundings meet and greet and use positive visualization thank you for a patient hearing and here i share my ids which you can get into and you can have a look at it because i remember there were years ago that was about 30 years ago i looked into my teacher cv that is dr suresh chandra was my teacher literally into his cv and i decided oh sir has got such a great cv and i would like to have a cv like that and i would always proud to be his student and i realized that when you have good teachers it would be a, they would be great role models to all of us so i wish you all the best in the road of journey of doctoring in the next 3 years and i congratulate each one of you for joining our family of conservative dentists and endodontics and i put into record the efforts done by the president and the secretary for this program in a very short period of time definitely would benefit the students to a great extent thank you thank you very much ma'am that was a very clear presentation of what actually the students want in fact uh, i would say it is an eye opener for them because you know there's so much of terminologies which they are actually not aware must be it would have been like a greek and latin for them and you really made it very clear with so much of uh, you know uh, so much of its exp uh, explanation in each of it and uh, it was nice to hear more about the q index that you were mentioning also and uh, i hope the pgs would have uh, noted the point what ma'am was telling before you start or decide on a topic a systematic review and a meta analysis of your uh, topic is very very essential to plan your study which is very very important because that is what you are going to work on for 3 years and uh, to why we are why everybody has been mentioning is the past uh, two three other speakers as well uh, it is like It, it just talks about you. You, you need to get uh, identified. It's only through this uh, publication. So happy learning for all the postgraduates, and thank you once again, ma'am, for this wonderful lecture. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you, Mitra, ma'am, and thank you, Kavita, ma'am. So on behalf of IACB, uh, I'm just. 
uh, sharing the e certificates first to mitra hegre ma'am and for wonderful uh, your and fast lectures to the postgraduate students so ultimate your take home messages for postgraduate students should be pub either publish or perish and next uh, to the wonderful your uh, moderator one minute so. okay. never mind it's okay i'm getting late thank you abhishek thank for you abhishek for giving me double certificates <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mitra, ma'am. Thank you, Karita, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Karita, ma'am, is my teacher. One, I mean, yes, was, and uh, uh, she will be, and. Uh, i really know what teachers mean and what amount of uh, influence they can get on a student so whatever i am today is mostly because of my teachers and i have a lot of gratitude towards them and i hope all the students understand uh, how much a teacher can influence a student in his or her life um i with this note all the serious part of iacd is over and now we will slightly go to the fun part of it and before that i would uh, also want to tell and invite dr nagesh uh, he's been there with us from morning today thank you sir for joining us uh, it's a pleasure to have you here thank you mohan thank you one and all so i would request dr laura to go ahead so uh, hello everyone uh i hope i'm audible uh, dr mohan am i audible yeah yeah yeah, yeah laura yeah. okay great so good afternoon everyone uh, myself professor dr laura mishra a faculty of institute of dental sciences uh, bhubaneswar and i have been given responsibility to introduce the moderator of this last yet interesting session of this two days uh, first mds pg orientation program so i would like to introduce our moderator dr pratima shinoy who is a professor pg and phd guide and head of the department at a bspm dental college and research center nagpur she has 78 national and international publications to credit she has also registered three patents for research with government of india she has authored textbooks on adhesion to tooth structure to endoperio relationship and her contribution to the textbook like a dental laboratory procedures textbook of endodontics and essential of preclinical conservative dentistry she has presented numerous papers in international and uh, national platforms and uh, she has got a second prize at avishkar a research competition organized by muhs uh, nasik and she is a pioneer in establishing an endo herb garden and a successful clinician who is also running a flourishing private practice for 25 years and uh, she was also the uh, nagpur uh, university topper final bds with that note and with that illustrious um, cv of yours ma'am i would like to um, call you upon and introduce our uh, speaker of the day yeah uh, a very good noon to you all Uh, and thank you dear laura for the kind words of introduction and as always you were gracious and very very kind first i would like to take this opportunity to express my deep sense of gratitude towards respected dr majumdar sir uh, and dr chandrashekar president iacd and the young dynamic secretary dr mohan kumar and the entire team of iacd for conceptualization meticulous planning and seamless execution of the first ever national pg orientation program 
It was a brilliant initiative to welcome and inspire the young generation towards attaining excellence in a vibrant speciality. I express my gratitude to them for giving me this, giving me a small part in this historic event. Dear students, for the last two days, the stalwarts from our speciality have enlightened you with the pathways of PG life. They have covered all that's needed to be executed to successfully accomplish the master's degree in one of the most sought after branch of dentistry. Seminars, journal club, documentations, advances in the field, publications, dissertation. I mean, all the topics have been diligently addressed to by the eminent speakers of our faculty. And now we have reached the culmination point. An important topic needs to be addressed, the fun quotient. In this very important phase of your life, fun is also needed. Dear students, I honestly feel the importance of this cannot be overstressed. I firmly believe that if one achieves brilliant success in academics and clinical practice, but leaves the institute as a stressed, over-anxious, battered personality, believe me, you have lost everything. As a teacher for more than 25 years now, I have witnessed many such deranged personalities. It's a very painful uh, thing to see, both for your teachers, your parents, and guardians to see a student so burdened in the prime of his life. The journey of the professional life is always tedious, long, and with many ups and downs. The burnout syndrome is a frightening reality stalking all of us at all times. So today we have with us a very eminent and friendly personality from our own speciality who will highlight the importance of staying positive enjoying your hobbies, at the same time, achieving professional excellence in this very important and significant three years of your PG life. All the uh, faculty you heard over the two years, many of them have hobbies like uh, Rupa Nadik Madam is known for her singing. We have people uh, who, uh, go on, who are good at photography. We have painters like Dr. Shishir Singh, sir, who is, an excellent, uh, who is excellent in drawing and painting. And I have the honor of having one of his painting in my uh, um, chamber as well. So it gives me immense pleasure to uh, and honor to introduce one such person who is going to influence you into having the ability to maintain your uh, personality at the same time do your post-graduation. Dr. Jay Dev Singh Dhillan, is a senior faculty, a friend for all, and like an elder brother to me. Dr. Jaydev has completed his bachelor's and master's in conservative dentistry and endodontics at Government Dental College and Hospital Amritsar, India. He is the editor-in-chief of Indian Journal of Dentistry and review board member in various journals. With 25 years of undergraduate and 10 years of postgraduate teaching experience, he has many paper publications in journals of repute, both national and international. Dr. Jaydev has contributed to various books like Textbook of Endodontics and Textbook of Operative Dentistry by Dr. Nisha Garg, and also authored a book titled Obturation Techniques by Lambert Academic Publishing House. He has attended various conferences of international and national repute and has been invited as a guest speaker at various platforms, international as well as national. A former president of Indian Endodontic Society and former president of Indian Association of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, he has been secretary of national conference as well as chairman of two PG conventions a former principal of Gyansagar Dental College and Hospital Patiala. He has been a member and a PG board uh, and on PG board and UG board of studies of various health universities in Haryana and Punjab. Currently, he is the director of dental solutions in Ludhiana. Apart from this big uh, introduction, he is one of those wonderful human beings who is always ready to help everyone. I cannot help but recall one such incident 
after the amritsar conference got over we had a flight back home in the afternoon me and my friends couldn't have enough of shopping in this vibrant amritsar city so we ventured for a, another round of last round of shopping in the tiny lanes of the old city and as bad luck could have it my friend's purse got flicked and with that all her documents and id with just few hours left to board the flight and no identity card left with her we were in a mess amritsar being a sensitive airport getting inside the airport itself without document was near to impossible nervous and frightened we could think of only one person dr jaydev believe me friends he not only responded to her distress call immediately but got us my friends aadhar card printed as soon as was possible we all reached home safely thanks to his timely help so with and for that i am always grateful to him so with these words of gratitude i hand you over to dr jaydev singh dhillan to speak on a very pertinent topic take it easy don't forget the fun i'm sure you're going to enjoy this one thank you यंग फ्रेंड्स who have uh, entered our profession now so guys please switch off your previous channels and let's tune into something new huh you have been bombarded by a lot of jargon i would say you will understand that word also too so uh, too much information has been given <laughs> to you over two days so please put that in your background remember it store it but please i'm just going to talk extempore i don't have a powerpoint so you'll have nothing to kind of uh, look at we are just going to talk and uh, yesterday was guru nanak jayanti when we began our orientation program so uh, just a very small quote one of the great men in history was guru nanak he had no servants yet they called him master he had no degrees yet they called him teacher he had no medicines yet they called him healer he had no army yet the kings respected him so in life you have to be very very different and of course finishing joining your fantastic branch of endodontics i i am unequivocal in all at all platforms to say that yes we are part of the best branch of dentistry and it also requires the most skill and i also like to quote one thing which uh, is there that only endodontists can appreciate the hard work done by endodontists no other branch does so much hard work so much effort and the rewards are also there your patients are your ultimate reward so one thing which i like to suggest from the beginning then we'll talk of many other things that uh, there is a small change from your graduate years when you move towards your post graduation graduation is only one thing you join in first year it's like crossing a river the other side you see internship final year you merrily swim on the top and just cross over and you just skim the subjects whereas in mds conservative dentistry and endodontics you're going to have to do deep sea diving every time that you are going to be put through a seminar or through a journal club or something you are expected to know everything in detail the how 
of it and what i like to suggest is that i think that topic was missed out please do remember that every question in your exams in every journal club every seminar will be okay fine lovely topic what are the clinical implications how are you going to clinically look into this how does this help you clinical the next uh, things that i would like to say to you is which we should be very clear from the beginning try to do quality work always it gives you a lot of satisfaction i am a firm believer of the traditional indian system of learning we must go as the vedas say from the near to the far learn the minuteness learn the smaller things the larger picture will follow automatically over the years we have such a fantastic curriculum for you the iscde the dental council your departments your faculty they will help you grow but don't think that you will achieve everything in one go whatever exercises they put you through whatever paces they put you through please remember they are in your best possible interest it is the course is designed around you it is not designed around the teacher the chief aim of education now is to help growing the mind for what is best and to make it perfect for a noble cause and the noble cause is ultimately to serve humanity we want you to develop into intellectual aesthetic emotional moral and spiritual good beings the older times of just packing your brain with stereotype information which was so called knowledge to a resisting brain that is gone nobody is going to do that to you anymore nobody is going to stuff you with knowledge, anything else please remember that your faculty is your best friend do not have a preconceived notion from previous years from seniors from peers from other specialities or from somebody who passed out 10 years ago that oh yeah this teacher oh, no 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 stay away or this one is you know very wicked person this one is mean person no no teacher is wicked or mean all teachers are fantastic human beings they will look after your best interest try to be friends with them but at the same time please do not break the protocols of regard and respect as was suggested by many speakers at least in our gdc is it was a very simple rule you arrived before your teacher and you left after your teacher so you imbibe it in the first one week 10 days and you're perfectly fine so there are certain th situations in which we automatically create stress but there is no need to create stress just give me a second i'm going to have to pull out something so what is stress stress is something is the body's reaction to any change that requires an adjustment or response so you have joined mds conservative dentistry it is a change in your life so don't get stressed automatically some stress is there to come but stress is a normal part of life you can experience stress and you can learn from stress so what is going to cause this stress just being under pressure oh i have joined mds now what to do i am under a lot of pressure lot of pressure many of you are just used to saying that but don't say that you are facing a big change and you are worrying all the time why don't do that there is no need to worry about that there are going to be overwhelming responsibilities on you but that is going to make you into better human beings but that does not mean that you give up on your other activities apart from the normal curriculum that you follow definitely maintain some hobbies definitely maintain some hobbies and then what is fun as defined by the oxford dictionary it is light hearted pleasure enjoyment 
or amusement or merry making and entertainment usually associated with recreation and play so work while you work and play while you play you must follow that idiom and it is true these are things which have been said over the years done over the years so i suggest what i do personally myself uh, i just suggested by dr pratim also right now do maintain a hobby all of you must be having a hobby don't give it up you've just joined mds course it is not the end of the world maintain your hobbies if you don't have a hobby inculcate one it is more easy for the day scholars slightly tougher for the hostlers but what we used to do in hostel is you can play a lot because there are so many of you if nothing else at home you don't have a hobby something just bring in a new pet perhaps uh, a lot of time is being spent on social media a lot of time is being spent on your computers try to maintain a balance between screen time and real life always try to maintain that don't live always in the anodontic world make friends from other specialties also i have some of my best friends who are endodontists but i have a lot of friends who are not even dentists so that helps a whole lot in going where you are another thing which i like to suggest is that a bad day is not the end of the world take life today take your seminar your journal club page to page you look at it after if somebody has said something say okay five pages were good two pages were bad not to worry next time make six pages better ultimately you'll get the whole thing better in routine time and that doesn't uh, actually matter very much and uh, one thing you can do to make your life very easy that was also quoted by a few of my very senior colleagues Uh, do invest in good equipment and try to maintain your equipment see and don't ever compare yourself with any other student even in our home if you look at your siblings or you look at your uncles your aunts your maternal side of the family paternal side of the family somebody is bound to be your favorite for no reason somebody's mama ji will be favorite somebody's mausi will be favorite for no rhyme or reason not that you don't like the others so similarly some student will be liked more by a teacher some student will be liked more by b teacher there is no bias in that that is just automatic and that happens that is the law of nature sometimes some guest comes to your house you automatically do something for them and sometimes some guest comes your parents also tell you please get something you go out and you don't come back only hana so these things are just bound to happen so just a treat your mds program as another part another chapter of your life so another thing that is going to happen is which is uh, i always i whenever we used to have post graduates joining i used to take a one year class in which used to be just for, on day one all 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 faculty all new pg students and i would call them to my office for a cup of tea and samosas and just chat and get to know about them now what do your what does your family do what does your mother do what does your father do how many siblings what do they do that makes them feel very nice so that is something they can do and similarly you must know about your teacher your teacher could be having a stress day their child could be in a class 12 exam could be in a class 10 exam could be in a prof exam so if you are going to have stresses the teacher will also have stress so on that day you can go and wish your teacher madam best of luck for your child's exam who is stopping you from saying that so it builds a very good bond of trust and affection and that remains lifelong as majumdar sir also said you know we are one family whatever i have been able to achieve today is all because of the love and affection of seniors and juniors by the time i was 40 i had become president of two wonderful organizations which i didn't even think i will become of one in my lifetime i was happy being an ec member but you know sometimes your friends they will see hidden talents in you your faculty 
will sometimes use somebody for going and doing outside work university work somebody will do academic work somebody will do printing work it there is no bias in that i was always assigned the task to go and get the tadi bill of the external examiner passed from the university why because the university people used to come to me and they were all my patients during my post graduate year so the moment the examiner came tadi bill and dr delin is off to the university getting the bills passed before they go back Uh, so those tasks are assigned to you because that's a, a teacher see something in you and then somebody was making tea and somebody used to take examiner to dinner so we never felt jealous of each other so don't compare and don't feel jealous and always always remain happy and cheerful and at least in our system of we still live in a family based and joint family based system at least in most part of the country i think your family is your anchor always stay connected to your family don't tell them don't come to my place don't come to my college don't come to my hostel they must come and interact with you even if they want to no no don't meet my teacher to buy why not it is just a mark of respect from the parent or from your family towards a person who is guiding you through life i beg to differ from a lot of faculty who say we are teachers and we are imparting knowledge nobody can impart knowledge nobody can teach you they are just going to set you on the path of learning and you have to follow that path of learning how you choose to follow it somebody can do it at a very quick pace somebody can do it at a fast pace somebody can do it at a slightly faster pace doesn't matter i had done all my it's a experience which i want to share with everybody uh, we were two of us in our uh, pg batch and everything was done together but one day boss calls me he was my closest friend dr ravi kapoor sir and he gave me a lot in life or oh, before every lecture before every national presentation that i did he would take me aside into his room and uh, it was standard for me you just buy your ticket uh, you'll stay in my room how much love and affection that is you just come uh, you have to present a paper right sir we could never said no at those points of time so he said yaar i think you should appear 3 months late i said fine sir so what happened to me in my life what did i lose i gained a very good friend i could have put pressure i could have begged borrowed no sir i want to appear he said yaar you come after 3 months fine sir but then what i learned in those 3 months are how close we became it is something which the fraternity knows about so i would recommend always be happy and uh, i would like to share a very very personal thing with you before i close and uh, the one of my favorite quotes is god grant me the courage to change the things i can the serenity to accept those i can't and the wisdom to know the difference so this quote i always have on my wall i've had it for about 30 35 years and another small one below that is that today is the first day of the rest of my life these two things have always helped me in my life so with this uh, very short and uh, i don't know whether words of wisdom or words of fun but i am always a bit away <laughs> from the regular uh, thought processes of most faculty and see i am having fun right and how many of you would have interacted with a covid positive patient i don't know very much but i tested covid positive on 25th so i'm having fun i was here all day yesterday i'm talking to you all today so it happened it happened what is the big deal it is not nothing is the end of the world so i went along in fact i prepared more read some more made some better quotes was able to get through some things unfortunately i'm talking from some uh, scripts and my telephone because my laptop got left in the clinic and i can't go get it so otherwise we <laughs> i'll mail a presentation which i had made but i couldn't retrieve it because then i was i'm you know locked up in a single room and that's why i have to be but that doesn't mean that you are not happy so with that note i would like to thank the organizers thank you so very much and my young friends be happy and enjoy your post graduation they will be the worst years of your life as well as the best years of your life
you will cherish them once you have passed up god bless everyone thank you so very much thank you dr jaydev for a wonderful presentation so friends that was man ki baat from dr jaydev and really uh, highlighted so many important points which you should remember because post graduation is just a part of your life and as he also said and i always say to my students as well uh, the thing is that we are your pg guide we are called pg guides we are here to guide you through your pg uh, life and we are here to support you in your journey and we are not here to hold your finger and show you and take you around and ask you to mug up the things so uh, pg life can definitely be a very wonderful experience for all it is a, uh, a time in your life when you make friends for life and even you find your own partners also so uh, with these words uh, i think i would uh, definitely want you all to have a good fulfilling life and a good you have entered in with a big bang with 2020 as at the same time with a very good uh, orientation program also and i think uh, you will become one of the most uh, uh, i think uh, a batch who is already knowing everything others had to learn over a three pe three years period of time so you have already learned so many things so make the most of it have a successful life stay blessed stay safe and dr jaydev on behalf of everyone of us who are watching and we all are praying for your healthy and safe recovery as soon as possible remain the best possible person you have always been thank, thank you thank you thank you both the uh, thank you uh, speaker and the moderator for executing an excellent session and sometimes the best presentation are present when they are in prompto okay with life experience and everything so with that note uh, i would um, share the digital certificate uh, to dr jaydev singh dilan thank you for taking out time uh, from your busy schedule and being part of this first mds pg orientation program thank you so and, much and uh, certificate to lovely ma'am dr pratima uh, shinoy ma'am who uh, did an excellent uh, moderation thank you uh, so with that note uh, i would just like to say if work isn't fun probably you are not playing on the right team and where people aren't having fun they seldomly produce good work so have fun and love what you do probably that is the best way to go ahead with your post graduation thank you thank you thank you dr laura with this we come to the end of the two day program uh we wish and hope uh, dilon sir that recovers very fast and you really have a big heart sir thank you so much thank you thank you thanks a lot take care of yourself uh we will be in touch with you now i would uh, like to call the vice president dr ratnakar to give the vote of thanks good afternoon everyone i take this privilege and feel proud as a vice president of iscd to propose a vote of thanks the two days orientation program conducted for the very first time for the post graduates under the ages of iscd with the elite list of speakers and moderators is a huge success with more than 900 registrations i take this opportunity to thank a dynamic and enigmatic personality dr dibindu majumdar former president general council of india for being the backbone of iacds all the thought processes as well as programs conducted under iacde for being a passionate member of iacde and also starving for the overall development of the iacde sir i thank you for being part of every program and helping association achieve great heights with each program i would like to thank the fantastic line of all speakers who 
over the last two days have delivered the best of lectures on various aspects of conservative dentistry and endodontics has benefited the registered delegates to understand the subject as well as the association. The program has seen such a huge success because of the efforts taken by the speakers. I'd like to thank all the moderators who have moderated the session over, over the last two days. I would like to thank all the head of the departments of various colleges for registering their students for the program and contributing in the success of the program. I would like to thank the entire team of office bearers of IACDE, the president, the secretary, the president-elect, the vice presidents, and the executive committee members for their untiring efforts to make this program a huge success. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the registered students for participating in the huge members and making the orientation program organized for the first time. I would like to thank one and all who have directly or indirectly contributed for the success of the program. I being one of the office bearer of IACDE feel happy and encouraged with the success of the program and feel that many more new programs of such quality can be conducted for the betterment of the students and the association. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we will conclude it. Um, I would like to ask President Chandrayak Shekhar, sir, to give some words, and then we are closing it up. Good afternoon, one and all. Well, uh, continuous two days of uh, sessions have happened, and uh, I hope and wish all the students have gained a lot of knowledge from these two days. Though it is a one-time program which has been done for the first time by the IACDE, I thank all the office bearers and members who have joined today and make the program a grand success. Thank you one and all and stay safe and stay healthy. Dylan Bhai, take care. Thank you for the last lecture which was encouraging to the students. Thank you one and all. Thank you all. Take care, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Mohan, take care. Thank you. Yes, sir. You take care. Bye-bye, sir. Thank you.